of Lapinig, Honorable Maria Luisa Menzon, uh, Mayor of Gamay, Honorable Clarita Gamba, Incoming Mayor Raquel Capoquian of Gamay, we also acknowledge her presence here this afternoon, and we'd also like to acknowledge former Mayor Timoteo Capoquian of Gamay, also here with us this afternoon. From Bubon, Mayor Clara Gremio, and incoming Mayor Rene Celespara, also of Bubon. So we, we'd like to acknowledge your presence this afternoon. From Samar, let's also acknowledge Pagsanghan, Mayor Honorable Ed Edgar Tan. And from Gandara, Honorable Mayor Eufemio Oliva. Good afternoon, everybody. We'd also like to acknowledge the presence of Mayor Dexter Uy of Cat Balogan and R.D. Exuperius of Alberino of CHD Region 8.
We'd also like to acknowledge the presence of CIN Mayor Jose Cor Hepolonga. And we'd also like to welcome the Mayor of the Municipality of Sindangan, Mayor Rosendo Labandabad. Good afternoon.
Good afternoon, everyone. Maayong hapon ka na itong tanan. And maupay na kulog to everyone, especially to our guests there in Recording in Progress. Samar and Zamboanga del Norte. Good afternoon, everyone. Especially also to those who are with us online via Zoom. Good afternoon po sa ating lahat. And at this point, may I invite each one to officially register to our event by using the QR code provided in the screen or in the link provided at the, our chat box. Can you rename your Zoom names like the one showed on your screen right now so we can properly identify you? And for to those uh, who are with us online, can we stand also remind everyone to please rename their Zoom names. Thank you so much. So please be advised that this event is being recorded. You may send a permission request to the Zurich Family Foundation and its partners if you want to use the materials for learning purposes. We encourage everyone to keep themselves muted when someone is presenting or speaking and turn off your video unless advised by the host. To view the presentation in full screen, click on the full screen icon found at the upper right corner of your window. So we'd like to inform also everyone that aside from this Zoom conferencing and in-person setup, we are also live streaming on Facebook and posting the highlights in ZFF's Twitter account. Please take a moment to get these social media links and share them to your colleagues and friends. For today's colloquium, use the hashtag keys, hashtag nutrition governance, hashtag invest in nutrition, hashtag uokmalusog, and hashtag UHC for F1KD. Ayan, we, overall, we'd like to hear more of your thoughts and have you post them also in your social media pages. So for our gentle reminders for this afternoon, overall, we want to create a safe virtual space for learning and discussion in the entire of our activity to achieve it and trust the process. Maintain in respect and remember that everyone has their own and be forgiving of technology should there be any challenges. Manage personal expectations, maximize the time that we have to learn from each other, and lastly, stay humble and have a learner's mindset. So that is it for our afternoon's reminders. I give you back to Doc Ellen. Yes, thank you, Sam. Thank you for those reminders. I hope everyone was able to take note of those. And again, a pleasant afternoon to everybody. I'd like to welcome you all to today's colloquium. Let me tell you a bit of something about this afternoon's event. So the Zuiling Family Foundation and UNICEF, with support from Korea International Cooperation Agency, or COICA, are implementing the project entitled Integrated Nutrition and Health Actions in the First 1,000 Days, Improving the Lives of Vulnerable Children and Women in Samar, Northern Samar, and Zamboanga del Norte, Philippines, the Provincial Nutrition and Governance Program. This program aims to reduce child malnutrition, especially stunting, through good leadership and governance. So this project provides various capacity building interventions to the local government units in the implementation of an integrated and comprehensive delivery of maternal, infant, child, and adolescent health and nutrition services. Now on its final year, the project and its partner LGUs have documented various solution models with new practices and innovations in the strengthening and harmonization of health and nutrition systems at the barangay, the municipal, the provincial, and regional levels, thus preparing them for universal healthcare implementation. 
honorable guests and speakers, health and nutrition champions from our LGUs, partners from the national agencies, academic partners of ZFF, and to the rest of our colleagues from the development sector, and the audience, of course, who are participating with us, whether online or on-site. Right now, we're also on-site in Hotel De Fides in Tacloban City and at the Top Plaza Hotel in Nepolog City. All of you, I'd like to welcome you all to the UNICEF Provincial Nutrition Governance Program Colloquium, preparing provinces toward a UHC-ready nutrition system. I am Dr. Ellen Medida. I will be your host for this afternoon. And you've also met my co-host, Ms. Sam Morales. And the two of us will be walking you through the entire duration of our online event this afternoon. But of course, before we start, may I request everyone for a moment of silence as we seek refuge, guidance, and divine providence. After that, please remain standing for the Philippine National Anthem. Please rise. Thank you. Namin, pakinggan mo po ang pagtawag namin sa iyong banal na pangalan. Basbasan mo po ang aming pagtitipon at kami kaluguran mo sa araw na ito. Pagyamanin mo po, Panginoon, at maging nakaayon sa iyong kalooban ang aming pagkikita-kita mula sa simula hanggang katapusan. Masalaminawa namin ang layunin mong takila sa aming buhay at may sagawa namin ngayon ang aming mga gawain na may kabutihan at pag-ibig sa aming kapwa. Kami po ay naninigluhod sa iyong harapan na kami iyong patnubayan at iwaksi sa aming kaisipan ang anumang masasamang kaisipan Inggit at pagkikipag-alit sa aming mga kasama. Bigyan mo kami ng sapat na lakas at katalinuhan upang maibahagi naman namin ang aming makakaya sa aming mga kasama sa pagtitipon na ito. Panalangin namin ang lahat ng ito sa pangalan ng iyong bugtong na anak na si Jesus. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. You may now be seated. Thank you. So the colloquium is a time-honored tradition of the Zulik Family Foundation, and this started way back in 2011, wherein we gather to learn from the lessons of the program through our local chief executives and other local leaders, and we share ways and solutions on how to improve the health and nutrition systems toward better outcomes, especially for the poor and the marginalized. And of course, the intent of today's colloquium is no different. The UNICEF Provincial Nutrition Governance Program was conceptualized using the key learnings yielded from the previous Nutrition Governance Program implementation, one with Christian Gerhard Jebsen Foundation in Gamay, 
the province of Northern Samar, and in Loop, province of Romblon, and with the Nutrition International in Puerto Princesa City, province of Palawan, and in Tagum City, the province of Davao del Norte, as well as in Takurong City, the province of Sultan Kudarat. This program's implementation documented new learnings given the current landscape and environment. As we all know, so much has happened. What with the ongoing COVID response, universal healthcare implementation, full devolution, and the recently concluded national and local elections. So for today's colloquium, we will hear presentations from our governors, our mayors, and other leaders in Samar, Northern Samar, and Zamboanga del Norte. These discussions would also be very interesting because they will share with us their insights and experiences on holding the line against malnutrition during this long pandemic and preparing their LGUs for UH implementation, including the pivot to the full devolution. Specifically, this aims to share leadership and transformation stories of governors, provincial core team members, mayors, municipal and city core team members, and regional core team members in addressing nutrition challenges and inequities during normal and disruptive times to disseminate learnings from the municipalities and cities, the provinces and regions in improving nutrition systems to become UHC ready through sectoral integration and harmonization. And of course, to recognize our governors or mayors and members of their core teams and regional core team members who have satisfactorily completed the UNICEF PNGT. So now let me share with you, with you the flow of our activity this afternoon. So right now, we are in the opening program. So Zulik Family Foundation and Koika representatives will be delivering some opening messages. And then the learning circle proper will be opened by sharing the key accomplishments and learnings of UNICEF Provincial Nutrition Governance Program. After that, we will have three segments of sharing to be given by our distinguished local chief executives on their experiences and learnings on strengthening nutrition systems. Reaction and support will be given as well as after each segment by our regional partners. We will then talk about how the learnings from these experiences contribute to preparing the nutrition systems of these provinces to eventually become UHC ready. Statements of support will then be given afterwards by the representatives coming from our national agency for health and nutrition as well as from the private sector. And then we will be closing the online activity by giving up messages from UNICEF and GFF. So we're in for a full afternoon and I hope everyone's excited and looking forward. The work of the Zulig Family Foundation as a catalyst for change in collaboration with our partners demonstrates that the complexity of enhancing and strengthening the health and nutrition system necessitates a holistic approach. Changing the system to make it more responsive and inclusive should be the absolute minimum. The critical role of the leader, starting from owning the problem to co-ownership of important sectors and then institutionalizing new arrangements cannot be overemphasized. And now to give us the welcome message, may I share the line with Dr. Anthony R. Faraon, Deputy Executive Director of the Zuling Family Foundation. Dr. Tony. Good afternoon. Before I start, let me acknowledge our guests from our nutrition champions from our provinces, municipalities, and cities, Governor Roberto Uy, mayors and core team of Zamboanga del Norte, Governor Edwin Marino Ong Chuan, mayors and core team of Northern Samar, and Governor Reynolds Michael Tan, mayors and core team of Samar. Our technical partners in DOH and NNC under Secretary Dumama Jr. from the Department of Health, Dr. Azuzena Dayanghirang, Executive Director of the National Nutrition Council, Dr. Beverly Lorraine Ho, Director of the Disease Prevention and Control Bureau of DOH, Regional Director Exuperia Sabalberino of the DOH CHD Eastern Visayas, Dr. Catalino Dotolio Jr., the Regional Nutrition Program Coordinator of NNC Region 8, Regional Director Joshua Brillantes uh, from the DOH CHD Sambuanga Peninsula, Ms. Nympha Ekong, the Regional Nutrition Program Coordinator of NNC Region 9. 
and the partners from Koika, Mr. Kim uh, Insub, the country director, Yun Julie, the assistant country director, Yuli, the program coordinator, and Ms. Margarita Enrico Enriquez, the health program officer. Of course, our partners from the UNICEF, Oyun Saikhan Devenorov, UNICEF representative, Bezad Nubari, deputy representative, Dr. Malalay Amadadzai, health and nutrition section chief, Ms. Alice Nicoroy, nutrition manager, our friend, Dr. Mariela Castillo, health and nutrition specialist, and our partners from the private sectors, headed by Mr. Elvin Ivan Uy, executive director of the Philippine Business for Social Progress. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon again. Welcome to the UNICEF PNGP Colloquium entitled Preparing Provinces Toward a UHC Ready Nutrition System. Nutrition has always been a challenge for us. Stunting is a primary indicator of a country's state of nutrition. From 2003 to 2019, the stunting prevalence rate among children below two years old of age practically plateaued and has not gone down below 20%. This has been our long challenges. What is it that we must do to hasten the reduction of stunting in the country? When we were asked to do partnership with COICA and UNICEF with this program, we brought into the partnership the ZFF Health Change Model as applied to nutrition. Essentially, we want to have a drastic reduction of stunting prevalence among zero to two years old you must improve the nutrition services integrating first 1,000 days at all levels. We must need to make this system more responsive so that uh, we may be able to bring more services to be accessed by poor families to help reduce the stunting prevalence among their children. To be able to come up with a responsive system, we really need to have a responsive leadership for nutrition in the first 1,000 days. We need to build the leadership and governance capacity of the elected official and their health and nutrition core team, especially on their capacities in the first 1,000 days program management. This includes the local chief executives, the core team, and the regional partners. This is the UNICEF project result framework, which was used in the implementation of the UNICEF Provincial Nutrition Governance Program. To improve access to F1KD services, we need to, number one, improve local governance capacities to integrated health and nutrition system for the first 1,000 days. Governors have a major role in integration work. Number two, we have to establish integrated service delivery network for the first 1,000 days. There is an assessment being made. Guidelines are being developed and operationalized. And number three, integrate and harmonize support for F1KD is done in the regional level. This is the role of the Department of Health and the National Nutrition Council, regional offices and staff in supporting provinces come up with their first 1,000 days program. This is the key first 1,000 days interventions framework. In the first 1,000 days of life or the life course, we need to identify target outcomes during pregnancy, birth and infancy, and early childhood. There are nutrition-specific interventions, specifically prenatal care, exclusive breastfeeding, postpartum care and lactation support, supplementation, diet diversification, optimal feeding, vaccination, acute malnutrition rehabilitation, and management of childhood illness. We also need to incorporate the nutrition sensitive programs, especially incomes and food. We see the governor of the province as the main integrator, the mayors as the key implementers, and the barangay nutrition council as the demand generators. The next slide gives you the 32 month provincial nutrition governance program operational framework. We see, the, we see first the capacity building interventions given to local officials, primarily to local chief executives, especially in developing a vision and an integrated strategy. 
how to strengthen delivery service uh, network, and how to deepen community participation and multisectoral engagement. These are the interventions given to the first 1,000 days actors so that they will do the action on the next six to 18 months, specifically in coming up with uh, letter A, functional nutrition and health committees, uh, B, identification of priority population, C, increasing investments for health and nutrition, uh, D, responsive nutrition communication and advocacy campaign, E, improving capacities of health worker, um, F, providing social protection for vulnerable families, and lastly, increasing food production diversity and access. In green, we see the outcomes, and this is to ensure that the improvement in nutrition outcomes will be faster than what was achieved in the past years. Given the interventions, we should see the reduction of nutritionally at risk pregnant women, improved birth spacing, improved breastfeeding starting on the seventh month of the implementation. Likewise, we should also be able to see improved immunization rates and reduced uh, childhood illnesses and wasting. And finally, we should be able to see reduced stunting prevalence on the second year. Given this approach, what have been the results? What are the results in reducing stunting prevalence? From the data of the areas we've been working uh, with primarily the provinces of Northern Samar, Samar, Zamboanga del Norte, and areas with similar programs such as Basilan and Salangani province, and the city of Takorong, uh, city of Tagum, and the city of Puerto Princesa. It is worthwhile to note the results from Samar provinces. It reduced stunting prevalence from 24.4 in 2019 to 19.8 in 2021. Other similar LGUs showed good results. Takorong City from 7.8 in 2019 to 4.3 in 2021, as well as Sanangani from 9.1 in 2019 to 5.2 in 2021. It is imperative to have a closer look on LGUs with much improvement and to scrutinize what were the factors involved in the reduction of stunting prevalence. It is also worthwhile looking into experiences of other local government units and to find out what, uh, why the results has not been as similar as those of Samar, like SDN and Northern Samar, where the rates plateaued from 2019 to 2020. There must be answers to this, but the important thing is what actions had or has been taken to improve the indicators. On top of showcasing the accomplishments of our LGUs, the objective of this program is to share learnings that will show us how to do it better with much results. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Tony, for that message. At this point, we'd also like to call on the Korea International Cooperation Agency or COICA Philippines Assistant Country Director, Yu Mi. Honorable Governors and Mayors of the Province of Samar, Northern Samar, Zamboanga del Norte, Officials and staff from the Provincial and Municipal Core Teams, Department of Health, National Nutrition Council, Civil Society Organizations, Academia and UNICEF. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant day to all of you. On behalf of the Koika Country Director, Unzap Kim, I am very much honored to be part of the Provincial Nutrition Governance Program Colloquium. I sincerely congratulate everyone, most especially the three provinces under the leadership of our honorable governors for ensuring that nutrition is a topmost priority. Also, please allow me to sincerely thank you, UNICEF and Zulik Family Foundation for the excellent arrangements for this event. The Korean government recognizes the urgent need to address malnutrition in the Philippines. Thus, 
The COICA International Cooperation Agency included health as one of the four priority sectors under its country partnership strategy and country plan. Moreover, COICA's midterm strategy for health is geared towards achieving a healthy life and universal health for all through its program on reproductive, maternal, neonatal and adolescent health health emergency preparedness and response, and capacity building for digital health. With the implementation of the first 1000 Days project in partnership with UNICEF and the Philippine government, valued at 6 million US dollars, we've seen significant accomplishments in the areas of policy and governance, systems for nutrition and health service delivery, and social and behavior change communication. Hence, that's the very reason we are here today, to celebrate and give recognition to the main drivers of health and nutrition system. Once again, let me laud the efforts of the local government units, DOH, NNC, CSOs and UNICEF, for your unwavering support and cooperation, especially amidst the challenges added by the COVID-19 pandemic. Quaker hopes that through this colloquium, we will be able to scale up our efforts and inspire more LGUs to replicate or even do better from what has been done. Koika is deeply committed to working together on the health and nutrition issues in order to meet our mutual goals toward a UHC-ready nutrition system. Thank you and Mabuha. Thank you very much, Ms. Yu Li from Koika, Philippines, the Assistant Country Director, for that message. From the learnings of the previous nutrition governance programs, intersectoral collaboration proved to be an effective strategy to harmonize efforts and interventions on nutrition from city or municipality down to the community level. The UNICEF PNGP project elevated this strategy by involving the province level in order to come up with an integrated F1KD service delivery network. This F1KD service delivery network shall help in ensuring that nutrition-specific and sensitive programs and interventions are accessible across all levels and that no one will be left behind, most especially the most vulnerable populations. For the nutrition-specific and sensitive interventions to be integrated, each level of governance must therefore have its own stake or taya. During the implementation using this framework, key accomplishments have been realized across all provinces and the municipalities and cities involved. At this juncture, we will then be witnessing best practices and integrative initiatives from our local government units, both province and municipalities, as well as with our regional partners in strengthening nutrition systems. To give us the overall program accomplishments and learning, I now call on Dr. Joyce Villar, Nutrition Portfolio Director of the Zuling Family Foundation. Good day to everyone. Today, we celebrate the completion of the three-year Zuling Family Foundation and United Nations Children's Fund partnership in the Provincial Nutrition Governance Program entitled Integrated Provincial Interventions for the First 1,000 Days in the Provinces of Samar, Northern Samar, and Zamboanga del Norte, Philippines. Considering the resources utilized in this partnership from our funder, Korea International Cooperation Agency, United Nations Children's Fund, Zwilig Family Foundation, Department of Health, National Nutrition Council, and provincial and municipal government units. It is but proper to publicly account for, in this colloquium, the program status and the results it has created. Our foundation's work is guided by our nutrition change model. This approach was piloted in 2016 in two rural municipalities. After three years, improved health indicators were realized especially in reducing the stunting prevalence. Same goes to our pilot cities, Takurong, Puerto Princesa, and Dagum, which showed improved system and nutrition outcome indicators after two years in the program. In 2019, 
UNICEF partnered with us in replicating the nutrition change model in the three UNICEF-supported provinces and their priority municipalities. The partnership objective was to contribute to the improvements in the nutritional outcomes of pregnant women, infants, and children in the first 1,000 days and contribute to reduction of wasting and stunting among children below five years old in the target provinces. Based from the learnings of the previous nutrition governance programs, intersectoral collaboration proved to be an effective strategy to harmonize efforts and interventions on nutrition from city or municipality down to community level. UNICEF PNGP project elevated this strategy by involving the regional and province level in the pursuit to come up with an integrated first 1,000 days service delivery network. Using leadership and governance as the platform for integrated service delivery, the project came up with four major programs that targeted regional, provincial, city and municipal, as well as barangay leaders. The programs aimed at building the leadership and governance capacities of our regional partners, local chief executives, and their nutrition committees and barangay leaders to strengthen nutrition systems through enabling policies, planning, financing, and full support and coordination at various levels for the implementation of nutrition-specific and nutrition-sensitive interventions for the first 1,000 days. Overall, the partnership gave us a chance to apply our nutrition change model in a more integrated way across the levels of the nutrition and health system, from the Department of Health and National Nutrition Council regional offices to the provincial nutrition and health system down to the municipal and later to barangay and across sectors as well. Now, what were the results of our interventions? The project was implemented in three provinces and 19 municipalities. The Barangay Leadership for Nutrition and Development or BL4ND training of trainers was conducted in 12 of 19 municipalities and the rollout was conducted jointly by Zwilig Family Foundation and Municipal Nutrition Committees in six municipalities. In addition to three governors and 27 provincial nutrition committee members, 19 mayors, 205 municipal and city nutrition committee members, 330 barangay leaders, 11 Department of Health and National Nutrition Council regional personnel have been engaged and trained under the partnership. Governors, mayors, and nutrition committee members were trained. Are they better leaders now? A baseline bridging leadership competency assessments were done prior to each capacity development intervention. For our governors, endline assessment showed improvement in all the three core competencies, especially on core competency two, which is achieve health and nutrition equity and outcomes in normal and disruptive times, and core competency three, which is strengthen multisectoral network to attain health and nutrition equity and outcomes. Later on, you will hear how this project contributed and the bridging leader com competencies developed by them to the leadership journey of some of our participants as they share their public narratives. Has the leadership also brought improved health and nutrition system? At the beginning of the program, the project introduced the seven key deliverables in nutrition. These are considered the critical knobs in making the nutrition system functional and responsive. In the implementation of the Nutrition Governance Program, these deliverables became the main priorities of the governors, mayors, and their nutrition core teams to hasten improvement of nutrition outcomes. After two years in the program, our provinces indeed showed improvement on these critical knobs, particularly the knobs on functional nutrition committees, nutrition investments, improved capacities of health workers, and social protection for vulnerable families. Let's take a look at the overall changes in the provinces with improvements in the nutrition system's building blocks. 
we see that indeed there have been nutrition systems improvement among the three provinces. The program also strengthened the execution of roles and functions at each governance level to improve nutrition outcomes. Province with governor and provincial nutrition committee as the key integrator Provinces ensured that all are moving towards a unified direction for nutrition. Strategies for nutrition were developed, like that of Samar's Tataktamkad, Zamwanga del Norte's EGBU, and Northern Samar's four cluster approach. Provinces provided augmentation of resources, evidenced by the increased investment for nutrition over the years. City municipal with mayor as a key implementer. City or municipality ensured that services are available and accessible to the community. Barangay and community as demand generator. Needs are identified through active community involvement and participation. And lastly, regional partners as the technical authority on health and nutrition, ensuring that all technical assistance and all possible support are given to local government units. Did this nutrition system reforms led to better nutrition outcomes and other health indicators? The COVID-19 pandemic likely erased whatever incremental decrease the country made for malnutrition because hunger incidents increased. As we can see, the provinces where we had our nutrition governance programs, leaders made sure that the nutrition services continued despite their limited resources. In our pilot provinces, stunting prevalence decreased from baseline in two of three provinces and in the municipalities. Wasting prevalence continued to decrease as well in the three provinces and municipalities and did not deteriorate further during the pandemic. The resulting nutrition indicators and system improvements show that an improved and integrated nutrition system particularly for the first 1,000 days, could prevent the increase in stunting and wasting even during the pandemic. While the decreases in stunting prevalence rates may not be that high in some of the local government units, the improvements in the program remain significant considering the larger population and areas involved. PNGP led to immediate reforms that harmonize the interventions from provinces municipalities and barangays on health, nutrition, and social programs to address malnutrition among the F1KD population. Gains have been made, but admittedly, these are still fragile and may be uncertain due to the added layer of challenge, which is the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, plus the devolution in our government. Stunting prevalence among the three provinces, though below the national target of 21.4%, still needs further improvement. We still need to address remaining challenges and innovate solutions to further improve nutrition outcomes. Though significant increases have been made when it comes to nutrition investments, adequate budget utilization must be done to fully maximize the range of services and interventions on nutrition that our provinces and cities or municipalities can offer to the community. Improved information system and capacities of frontline nutrition workers has to be strengthened to help track and diagnose those that needed immediate nutrition interventions. UNICEF reports from the early months of the COVID-19 pandemic suggest a 30% reduction in the coverage of essential nutrition services in low middle income class and declines of 75 to 100% under lockdown context. For our local government units, nutrition and health services must reach 90% coverage to help prevent deterioration of health and nutrition outcomes. And to ensure that vulnerable populations are trapped, and 90% coverage of nutrition and health services are provided, there must be adequate number of skilled, competent, and dedicated human resource for health and nutrition. Lastly, efforts on ensuring food security must be sustained and further improved. There must be an operational food security or food production programs similar to Zamboanga del Norte's Integrated Livelihood and Nutrition Program. On top of addressing the remaining challenges, 
we would also like to recommend the following. As we are now in transition and about to enter new leadership in some of the local government's units, we need to strengthen the nutrition committee with a new local chief executive and possible new members of the nutrition committee. Since all our efforts and initiatives are gearing towards the attainment of universal health care, interventions on strengthening the harmonization of Department of Health and National Nutrition Council and the nutrition system of local government units must also be a priority. Development of local nutrition action plan for the year 2023 to 2025 is crucial in sustaining our gains and improving more on nutrition. For our partners to support provincial nutrition governance program to produce more governors and mayors as health and nutrition champions. Follow through of initiatives done by the provinces and municipalities to sustain the gains. Sustain and advocate for a province-led nutrition program implementation. And lastly, roll out good and innovative practices from provinces and municipalities that improve their nutrition status. In closing, let me end this by acknowledging the important contributions of our partners. Mr. Kim yun Sub, Korea International Cooperation Agency, Philippines Country Director, and Ms. Oyun Saikan, then Dev Norov, UNICEF Philippines Country Representatives, the Department of Health, represented here by Undersecretary Abdullah Dumama of the Field Implementation and Coordination Team, and the National Nutrition Council Assistant Secretary and Executive Director, Dr. Azuzena Dayanghira. We would like to thank also Dr. Exoperia Sabalberino, Regional Director of DOH CHD Eastern Visayas, and Dr. Joshua Brillantes, Regional Director of Z CHD Zamboanga Peninsula, and our untiring and supportive Regional Nutrition Program Coordinators, Dr. Catalino Totolio Jr. of NNC Region 8, and Ms. Nympha D. Eco of NNC Region 9. Our deep gratitude for the support and work provided by the DOH and NNC regional offices in supporting the provinces in improving their nutrition systems and ensuring that good health and nutrition outcomes are reached. We also acknowledge the participation of our senior coaches who share their expertise to the governors and their teams. Our Zwilig Family Foundation President, Mr. Ernesto Garilao, and former Department of Health Regional Directors, Dr. Minerva Molon and Dr. Emilia Municimbo. Let me also thank our Zwili Family Foundation UNICEF project staff, headed by the project manager, Mr. Ray Anbang. Jasmine Ahmad and Shella Dokosin for the successful implementation of our programs. Uh, maraming salamat and have a good afternoon. Thank you for that sharing, Dr. VR. Indeed, the program has achieved great milestones despite the gigantic challenges brought about by the pandemic. We are hopeful that the remaining challenges will be addressed, especially now that the local leaders have committed to continue the efforts even beyond the project period. Now let us listen to the journey of Shayan, a municipality in Zamboanga del Norte, where they strengthen their Manchan service delivery at the barangay level, an essential part in implementing universal health care closer to the people. Let us welcome Shayan Mayor Honorable Jose Cor Repolongta. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my great honor to share with you the journey of the municipality of Cheyenne in strengthening its MNCHN service delivery in the paradise. I am Attorney Josicor Sepulunka, Municipal Mayor of Cheyenne, but soon to be the Vice Mayor of the same municipality. Cheyenne is a second class municipality in the province of Sabuanga, the with a population of 37,000 
168 in 2022. It has 32 barangays, 9 of which are considered Jida. Access to service is difficult with its rough terrain and unpaid roads. 70% of our population are Subanin or IPs. In 2015, we have a poverty incidence of 68.38%. As shown in the box is the health profile. We have one BMO facility and all barangays with a BNS and assigned staff. We also have 89 BHWs and 31 BNS who assist our frontliners in the barangays. Looking into this table, we have a quitting train for starting rate. Increase is noted in 2017 and decline in the following two years, but slight increase was again observed in 2021. For wasting, significant reduction is noted in 2018, but plateaued in the succeeding years. This is an indication that although the improvements are seen, but still not stable and indeed, the COVID pandemic has affected the implementation of health and nutrition programs. When we started the Municipal Nutrition Governance Program in 2020, we used this if one kd technical roadmap to self-assist our nutrition system. Hence, we found challenges and the team decided that in order to improve our services and programs, we need to ensure that we have a functional and expanded Municipal Nutrition Council, local adoption and implementation of nutrition-related policies and established our if one kd reporting system. To serve as an inspiration, we have envisioned that in 2025, Shine is a well, healthy, socially, economically resilient and empowered community. When we had the MNGP validation in March 2022, there were improvements. Stunting rate is below the national cutoff, but still a slight increase is noted in 2021. It is the same with restraining rate. There are improvements too in the health indicators. The improvements are also noted in the budget, its our capacity, access to communities, and level assistance support in the barriers. We are very thankful to our partners, the COICA, UNISA, and Zwilling Family Foundation, to the regional offices of the Department of Health and National Nutrition Council, to the provincial government with the leadership of Governor Roberto Uy, and to my team with their incomparable dedication and commitment to improve our nutrition system. We have joint meetings with the Municipal Council for the Protection of Children, School Board, Municipal Nutrition Council, and Local Health Board. But understanding the gravity of nutrition issues, we started having a separate MNC meeting to better discuss nutrition concerns. We conducted it regularly and ensuring full attendance in spite of the pandemic. At the same time, we have encouraged active vision of the Barangay Nutrition Council in all barangays. Likewise, we have regular coaching and mentoring activities to better address nutrition challenges and identify innovative approaches. We see the importance of continued capacity development. Hence, we monitor the conduct of BNS meetings, which also venues for technical updating. We are also grateful of the caravan sessions of the NNC9 which enhance the capacities of our health and nutrition workers and volunteers for nutrition program. We also increase the honorarium for the Barangay Nutrition Scholars and Barangay Health Workers. In 2021, our core team and myself participated in the bridging leadership for nutrition development. Thereafter, we piloted said training in two barangays and later part of the year, we rolled it out in the remaining 20 barangays. This activity is highly appreciated by the barangay leaders. After deep dive, we find the need to empower our barangays to achieve faster improvements on health and nutrition. During our MNC meetings, we decided more strategic barangays approach. Both these homebrays were conducted in the 22 barangays at the same time, monitored the dietary supplementation feeding for pregnant women. We strengthened our infant and young feeding program as well as implemented the malnourished fastest rehabilitation challenge. This is a reward system initiative focusing malnourished children with partners to ensure child's recovery from malnourished to normal. To increase awareness to good nutrition and healthy practices, Child LGU has health nutrition on air or Hansoa. This is a daily program 
that reach to most barangays of Shayan and other barangays from neighboring municipalities. In 2021, we had a state of the children address or SOCA with the theme New Normal na walang iwanan, karapatan ng bata ating tutukan. We also have livelihood programs in the barangays. Provincial Igbo paved the way for the municipality initiated Paglaong Project for malnourished households and the Igbo Lipayako or Liturit Pangkabuhayan Yaman ng Kabataan Organization. Lipayako is composed of barangay youth. Aside from assisting in the communal garden, they were also trained as peer educators to increase awareness on teenage pregnancy. We also passed and approved nutrition policies like a children's school. In spite of the gains and achievements, we still have challenges. To mention, we don't have a full-time Municipal Nutrition Action Officer and Nutrition Coordinator. Although we have increasing budget in the municipal level, but still insufficient budget in the barangay level. Our information system is also not in place. We just started piloting F1 AD reporting system in three barangays and identified rubac in the internet connectivity and availability of equipment. Also, I'd advise during the validation activity, there is a need to elevate existing EOS on nutrition to ordinance to ensure sustainability. To follow this policy implementation, tracking and monitoring. In the next quarter, will be the development of the local nutrition action plan. We hope to say the integration of Barangay Nutrition Action Plans in LNAPS. Come July 1 will be the change on administration and leadership. We fervently pray that what we have implemented will not be only sustained, but it will be much improved. Thank you very much, and may God bless us all. Thank you so much, Mayor Hepolongka. It was very clear that through you and your team's leadership, you weren't just able to bring these life-saving interventions to your barangays faster, but with more improved outcomes. Recognizing as well the other municipalities, Godod, Yonbi, Postigo, and Sindangan, for taking part as well in strengthening the nutrition system of their respective municipalities. Now, let us listen to Zambonga del Norte Governor Ro Honorable Roberto Uy on how they transformed their program on food production to be supportive to the province's nutrition goals and at the same time partnered with households or families with F1KD population, including barangay and community actors and private partners. Let us welcome the presentation of Zambonga del Norte Province. In Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 12, the Lord will open his good treasure in heaven to give rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. To our distinguished guests, to our fellow workers from the province of Samar, Northern Samar, and Sambonga del Norte, and other provinces, to our partners from the DOH and NNC 9. To our esteemed organizers, the COICA, the UNICEF, and the Suelic Family Foundation, a pleasant afternoon to all. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make His face shine in us. Psalm chapter 67, verse 1. I praise God and to the organizers for allowing me to share what the province has done so far to ensure food production, diversity, and security through our flagship program, the EGBU or Enhanced Gasan Bandihanon Sa Omahan. Indeed, our province is endowed with rich marine and mineral resources and is suitable for agricultural production. But in spite of that, our province was identified as one of the poorest provinces in the country. And we understand that poverty greatly affects the health and nutrition situation of 
the vulnerable population, particularly our children. In 2020, Swelling Family Foundation to its UNICEF Provincial Nutrition Governance Program guided us in understanding the nutrition system of our province which enabled us to see its loopholes. In the past years, we saw a continuous decline of the stunting rate. However, there is slight increase in 2021. Overall, we have a total of 9,834 children identified as stunted. The same goes with the wasting prevalent rate. This could be attributed to a lower OPT coverage in 2021 compared to 2020 and lack of validation due to COVID activities. Services will, force, will more focus on COVID mitigation and other health and nutrition services in the communities will less prioritize. Demand generation activities like health and nutrition events Counseling classes, home visits were also affected. On the other hand, our Provincial Nutrition Com Committee was not very functional. Meetings were not regularly conducted. The same was true in the municipalities. We have established a Provincial Nutrition Office, but we lack personnel. At the municipal level, we only have only three full-time in now out of the 27, and almost half of the BNAs lack basic training. Monitoring was irregularly done, and the provincial monitoring and evaluation team was inactive. We lack nutrition-related policies. Ito ang nakikita namin pagkukulang na gusto namin tugunan to see a healthier, aggressive, and food secure sa Buaga del Norte. When we conducted the P in GP validation in March 2022, there were improvements seen for the leadership and governance program. We already have a functional provincial nutrition committee, ECCD program and nutrition related policies were passed and approved. Finally, our F1 KD ordinance was approved in 2022. Budget for nutrition increased Yearly, however, our utilization rate in 2021 is low. Some activities were not fully implemented. Our provincial nutrition office is improved. However, there is still a need to pass track our F1 KD information system. In improving our nutrition system, the following action were done. We regularly conducted PNC meetings to discuss issues and identify solutions. Likewise, we strengthen the provincial monitoring and evaluation team. With regional NNC and DOH, we reviewed local nutrition action plans to online and monitor its implementation and challenges during implementation. To strengthen the provincial nutrition office, we had two additional staff making four staff in all. Likewise, incentives were pro are provided to municipal action officers, municipal nutrition coordinators, barangay nutrition scholars, and barangay health workers province wide. We continue the 120 day feeding program targeting the municipalities with highest number of minority children. We have increased budget for nutrition-specific and nutrition-sensitive programs. To support water and sanitation programs, there are water development projects in more than 50 barangays, province-wide starting 2020. Last year, we launched the Complementary Food Production Center in the municipality of Rojas to ensure a continuous supply of food pack for our minority children. The plan was for the raw materials to be purchased from the EGBU project. Let me share with you our flagship project EGBU or expanded Gasang Bandiha Anong Salmahan. EGBU is an anti-poverty program which aims to improve the living condition of the poor 
and marginalized farmers capacitate them on transformational organizing, farming, processing, marketing, and enterprise building. We started GBU Orgasing Bandi Anon Samahan in 2017. Originally, GBU assisted only corn and rice production. During its expansion in 2020, it supported vegetable production, fruit tree production, livestock raising, and fishery development, hence them in GBU or expanded Gasan Bandi Anon Samahan. Regionally, target beneficiaries of GBU are Farmers Association, Forest of the Poor Farmers, but currently expanded to barangays with high number of unknowledged children. This project directly coordinates with the communities with the intention that in spite of change of leadership, this project will be sustained, led by empowered members, indeed even after election, there is still life in EGBU communities. As a farmer said, we have the past and we can still continue to plant and harvest together. Also, EGBU was seen as a venue for integrating health and nutrition information and services. After three gubernatorial terms, we will welcome our new provincial leader, Pudis Pramna. I pray that what we have started will be sustained. What we fail to accomplish or the remaining challenges, the next provincial and municipal leadership will address. We also need to pass track in the adoption of national nutrition related policies. Monitoring activities should be conducted regularly utilizing the development developed monitoring tools. The nutrition information system should be given priority. Project which bring forth Good results should be sustained and expanded as possible, as importantly, the community and every Sambuaga de Nortehanon should be engaged and involved. Finally, all our endeavors we dedicate to God, for He is the only one who makes all things possible. We are just instruments and channels of His goodness. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Your Lord is the kingdom you are exalted as said over all. First Chronicles chapter 29 verse 11. Thank you so much, Governor Uy and Zambanga the Norte team. These discussions are indeed insightful. I am sure our audience have picked up something also from these presentations. To give reaction and message of support, may we call on National Nutrition Council Zamboanga Peninsula's Regional Nutrition Program Coordinator, Ms. Nimfa Ekong. My respect to our honored guests, to the local chief executives from the provinces of Samar, Northern Samar, in Sambuanga del Norte, to our ever supportive nutrition development partners and organizers of this colloquium, COICA, UNICEF, and Swellig Family Foundation, of course, to the Department of Health, National Nutrition Council, and to the other participants joining us in this momentous event. A pleasant okay. afternoon to each and every one. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this activity for inviting me to share a reaction and message of support to the presentations of Sambuanga del Norte Governor Honorable Roberto Uy on ensuring food production, diversity, and security, the EGBU experience of Sambuanga del Norte, and the Municipality of Cheyenne Mayor Honorable Josecor Hepolonka on strengthening Cheyenne's MNCHN service delivery in the barangays. It is with great pride that I commend the efforts and initiatives of these two chief executives. With their leadership and governance, there are a lot of great things done in their respective local government units. My congratulations. 
the presentation of the good governor of Sambuanga del Norte, Honorable Roberto Uy, have shown a glimpse of hope for his constituents. With this initiative, the enhanced Gasang Bahandi Anon sa Umahan, popularly known as EGBU, proves to be among the promising nutrition interventions to address the problem of malnutrition in the province. This is a concrete proof that all efforts have already been creating a good impact to the health and nutrition situation in the province. Although there are still things that need to be done, we appreciate the collective efforts of all the local nutrition committees in the province for their conviction to make a difference. The good perception of the local government in addressing malnutrition in the first 1,000 days of life is among the positive attributions to this success story of improvement with focus on providing food stability to deal with the persisting problems of hunger and malnutrition. I believe that the EGBU initiative of the province is proven to be instrumental. With the good leadership and harmonious efforts, top with God-centered approach through His people towards attaining a common goal of improving the overall well-being of the general population are apparent elements of inclusive growth and development. On the other hand, the presentation of the good mayor of Cheyenne, Honorable Jose Cor Hepolonka, have shown a great improvement in the service delivery in the municipality. The accomplishments presented are among the living testimonies of an improved health and nutrition situation if all the stakeholders will work together in the delivery of good health and nutrition programs. I also commend the local chief executive for his leadership as well. His efforts will surely make the municipality of Cheyenne a well-developed, healthy, socially, economically resilient and empowered community. Just sustain the good programs and projects you have, involve more partners, craft more policies, and make every community feel the ownership of the activities so that they will become more empowered to perform their part. With the full devolution of services following the Mandanas Garcia ruling, may you place more priority to the nutrition and health programs as this will truly directly impact the human resource of your community. Invest more in these programs, especially in the first 1,000 days of life, and surely there will be more folds of return that you shall gain in the future. You are already in the right track and keep it up. With all of this being said, I would like to give high appreciation to the contributions and assistance of our development partners that all our collective efforts are starting to emerge victoriously. Before I end, let me say this. The National Nutrition Council Regional Office 9 will continuously provide technical assistance through our caravan sessions whenever needed and policy support needed by the province. We hope that this momentum will be sustained towards eradicating malnutrition and other health concerns in the province and in the entire region. Indeed, good practices will be replicated and soon we will prosper as one region and one nation. With this, thank you and once again, good afternoon everyone. Thank you so much, Ms. Ekong. For this segment, both strengthening of access to nutrition services and specifics were emphasized.
for Cheyenne Improvement in the Maternal, Neonatal, and Child Health and Nutrition Service was front-loaded, including the dietary supplementation of mothers, as well as the innovation called Fasted Malnourished Rehabilitation Challenge. The EGBU is remarkably a strategic move made by Zamboanga del Norte, where it addresses the access to food and diversification issues. Farmers are given livelihood while providing foods on their table. Well, for the regional technical assistance, pandemic became a very challenging moment, but a light for innovations. The caravan of Department of Health Center for Health and Development and National Nutrition Council Zamboanga Peninsula Region is an excellent platform to continue the technical assistance and guidance to the LGUs. And at this point, since we value your insights, please scan the QR code provided in the screen and in your respective tables to input your thoughts on this matter. Moving on to the second segment of our learning circle, let me call on again, Doc Ellen. Thank you very much, Sam. And as she mentioned, please do share your insights and your thoughts through the QR code or through the link provided. For those who are in Zoom, you may use the link provided in the chat, or you can also utilize the chat box to share with us your thoughts and insights. All right, so we will now proceed to our next province. We will now proceed to Northern Samar. And for this part, we will hear first from the leader of the municipality of Lapinig. She will share their municipality's experiences, particularly on ensuring barangay participation on nutrition in their area. So now let us all welcome Mayor Maria Luisa Menzon. Mayor of Lampini, and when I attended one of the provincial meetings, I was surprised to see that Lampini was ranked eighth among the municipalities in the percentage of malnutrition. Lampini is one of the 24 municipalities of Northern Samar. It is the last town of the province and facing the Pacific Ocean. It is also a fifth class municipality and is composed of 15 barangays, 11 of which are coastal and along car line and four I Chida barangays. Lapini has a poverty index of 37.69% and population number as of 2020 PSA is 11,800. At ang karamihan nito ay nabubuhay sa pangingisda, pagsasaka, at informal livelihood. In 2020, biglang tumaas ang aming stunting prevalence rate to 29.9%, which is much higher sa national target na 21.4%. Ito ay dahil sa pandemic, kung saan ang mobility at ng individuals ay restricted, ganun din ang movement ng mga supplies and commodities. Marami rin ang nawala ng mga trabaho, lalo na yung nasa informal livelihood, kaya ng mga construction workers, kahit nga yung projects ng munisipyo ay temporarily nag-stop. There was also a time na tumaas din ang COVID cases sa amin, umabot ng 70. Kaya we have to impose granular lockdowns on some areas of the municipality. So ang health team uh, at saka ang munisipyo, ang naging focus ay doon sa COVID response and, and feeding program pati ang monitoring ng pregnant mothers ay nahinto dahil dito. No, the assistance situation, I, I was right away confronted with challenges. Una, I had to find people who can work with me in the advocacy. Mga taong capable at committed. The Municipal Nutrition Council was also non-functional and needed to be reorganized, expanded, and reactivated. The second challenge was some barangay nutrition committees were uncooperative and the constituents 
have varying levels of understanding and acceptance of the problem. Isa pang challenge ay our LGU lack technical expertise, whatever existing information system and technology that we have were inefficient. Of course, there was also the problem of financial sources, especially that COVID response and management were eating up most of our funds. Mabuti na lang at napasali ang napinig sa Municipal Nutrition Governance Program na sponsored na Yapoyka, UNICEF, Swili, ang aming MNC Core Team so may lalim kami sa in in MNGP training. We were guided to formulate a vision of health and nutrition and identify widely important goals. Immediately after the training and upon our return to Lapini, we re reactivated the Municipal Nutrition Council Committee and expanded its composition to include civil society organizations and other sectoral representatives. We also encourage the barangay officials to reorganize, expand, and also reactivate the respective barangay nutrition committees. Inspired by the story of Tarangan, we adopted one of their good practices. I likewise issued an executive order creating the Municipal Nutrition Action Office under the Mayor's Office. And we are now also in the process of appointing a permanent team now. We also appointed a staff to assist the present uh, M now. We allocated funds also from the 20% Economic Development Fund, as well as from our special projects allocation. These are on top of the Nutrition Fund in the health and social welfare offices. Ang sanggol ng bayan naman ay nagpasa ng ordinansa strictly enforcing the construction of functional sanitary toilets in every household para ma-achieve namin ang zero open defecation status. Ipinagpatuloy din namin ang FIDIC program na in-extend namin ng karagdagang three months mula sa araw na nakarecover na ang malnourished child. Sa support at motivation ng SWILIG and UNICEF, we also funded and conducted a rollout of the Barangay Leadership for Nutrition and Development Training to our barangays. Ang aming local municipal social welfare office ay nag-adapt ng polisiya na i-prioritize ang pamilya mayroong malnourished child para maging beneficiary sa sa SLP to fund cash or food for work programs. Ang amin namang local agriculture office ay tumulong para mapataas ang food production ng mga komunidad sa pamamagitan ng pag-distribute ng seeds sa schools, farmers at mga pamilya para sa kanilang backyard and communal gardens. Ten of our 15 schools executed a um, memorandum of agreement with Planet Water, uh, a non-government organization, for installation of water purification system sa kanilang mga eskwilahan. All of our concerted efforts resulted to a drastic change in our malnutrition situation from a stunting incidence of 29.99% in 2020 to 5.85% as per our OPT data as of April 2022. Wasting was also significantly reduced. Second, more are you getting convinced of the holistic approach to the problem and working together to prevent malnutrition from recurring the sense of co-ownership of the community involvement at the barangay level have also increased. Still, more work has to be done para sa office ng municipal mayor 
my primary concern now is how to sustain the gains that we have accomplished, especially considering budget limitations. We are a fifth class municipality, kaya maliit lang talaga yung annual 20% ADF namin. Isa pang challenge na kailangan namin punduhan uh, ay para sa information system na kailangan ma-install namin ang maging functional. Community participation will be a key factor to the success of the program. Kaya we will be devoting resources para sa information campaign at patuloy kami makikipag-usap sa mga barangay nutrition committees. Sa ngayon, mas tumaas ang pagkakaintindi na it takes an entire community to, to solve the problem of malnutrition. Na ito ay isang commitment at nagmumula sa pagkakaroon ng isang strong political will. Alright. Thank you very much, Mayor Menzon of the Municipality of Lapining. We also recognize the municipalities of Bobon, Gamay, Mapanas, Mondragon, San Jose, Lope de Vega, and Catarman for your contribution to better health and nutrition outcomes in your respective municipality. Let us now listen to the provincial experience of Northern Samar and learn about their institutionalization and implementation of nutrition policies in the province. May I now call on the Governor of Northern Samar, Honorable Edwin Ongchuan. Before we had this Provincial Nutrition and Governance Program, I saw malnutrition as merely figures and numbers. Northern Samar has to contend primarily with insurgency and natural disasters, which were two major roadblocks towards development. Thus, unfortunately, I have noticed that the nutrition program became less of a priority by the provincial government, by the municipal LGUs, and even the community. We did not have a fully staffed nutrition office. Even our nutrition action officer was not a full-time employee. There was no regular conduct of quarterly meetings by the Provincial Nutrition Council and nutrition assessments at the municipal level. This has resulted to a number of untrained health and nutrition workers and volunteers who were using outdated and anthropometric tools. Good thing that within my first few months as governor, Northern Samar was lucky enough to be chosen among the pilot provinces of the Provincial Nutrition and Governance Program of COICA, UNICEF, and the Swilig Family Foundation. From the baseline data collected, which was needed in order to create a roadmap, we have realized that we were falling in various health and nutrition indicators. We were missing important governance bodies such as Functional Nutrition Council, and an expanded local health board. There were very little policies supporting nutrition, interventions addressing inequity, and identification of priority population. There were no RHUs or hospitals in Northern Summer, which is trained in the integrated management of acute malnutrition, and we were lacking a provincial service delivery network. As development partners, COICA, UNICEF, and SWILIG guided and helped us in meeting specific nutrition targets, primary of which is the updating and enhancing of our Provincial Nutrition Action Plan. The deep dive activity we had in the town of Silvino Lobos opened my eyes to the fact that in order to ensure a fully developed and a highly productive citizenry will help us towards sustained progress and economic development, we must start with providing the necessary support for example, for the pregnant and lactating women in their family and their children, especially those in the formative years of zero to two years old. For me, being a new grandfather and constantly hearing my wife and daughter talk about the health and holistic development of my granddaughter has definitely reinforced my belief in the importance of nutrition in the first 1,000 days. Furthermore, I have seen that the deep dive provides me with an added perspective when it comes to understanding the needs of hardship of my fellow Nortehanon. Since then, I have made sure to do a deep dive activity whenever and wherever we hold our Kauswagan Caravan. Kauswagan Caravan is a flagship program in my term as governor wherein the provincial government along with the other government agencies and non-government entities regularly conducts 
outreach activities in far-flung barangays. The Human Development and Poverty Alleviation Cluster of the Provincial Government, composed of the Provincial Health Office, Provincial Nutrition Action Office, Provincial Social Welfare and Development Office, and the Provincial Population Office, among others, has identified the first 1,000 days of life program as one of our major programs for implementation. As we expanded our Provincial Nutrition Council and with the support of the Sangonian Palalawigan, we were able to enact ordinances adopting the Executive Order 51 or the Milk Code and the Republic Act 11148 or the F1KD Law. We are also grateful to our Sangonian Palalawigan for passing an ordinance granting additional incentives to Barangay Nutrition Scholars here in our province. We also have great partnership with the Academy through the University of Eastern Philippines who together with the Provincial Agriculture Office leads the production of healthy bread and other food products. Of course, it wasn't all smooth sailing. The COVID-19 pandemic posed the biggest challenge towards the implementation of our nutrition program. Although technology was of great help in having regular coordination, community quarantine measures lessened our activities on the ground. Even our nutrition office staff had to complement the personal requirement of our provincial health office and the hospitals to serve as frontliners in the COVID-19 response. During the pandemic, through our PSWDO and PAO, we distributed food packs which included vegetables, which were outsourced from our local farmers. Most of the members of the Provincial Nutrition Committee were also members of the Provincial Interagency Task Force and had to work first on limiting the number of cases and the spread of disease in order for our government agencies to go back to their regular functions. One of the things the pandemic reminded us is that public health is of paramount importance in our society. As to the budgetary allocations in 2019, the province only allocated 2.7 million in aid to nutrition programs. But in 2022, it increased to more than 9.5 million pesos with an additional 7.4 million for the benefits and incentives to our BNS for a total of 17 million pesos. This is a testament to the provincial government's commitment to continuously protect and promote the right to health and nutrition of our Nortehanos, as well as to improve the social well-being and welfare of the BNS who are at the forefront of the delivery of government nutrition programs at the grassroots levels. Now, we have more green boxes in our F1KD roadmap. Thanks to our team, we have achieved our goals, particularly in establishing functional health and nutrition councils. Identification of priority population and RHU and hospital accreditations. We have strengthened the capacity of the health workers through trainings and mentoring, and even conducted regular monitoring of the program implementation at the municipal level. As we reach the culmination of the UNICEF PNGP, the provincial government of Torre Samar proceeds with the commitment to build on our gains and to implement more changes. On behalf of the Torre Samar core team, I would like to extend my immense gratitude to the Korea International Cooperation Agency or COICA, the United Nations Children's Fund or the UNICEF, and the Swilig Family Foundation for being the development partners of our province in this journey. In my capacity as governor, I will continue to encourage our mayors to undergo their own deep dive activity in order for them to be regularly reminded of the need to sustain the nutrition programs in their municipality. Similarly, I intend to bring up nutrition issues in quarterly meetings of the League of Municipalities here in our province. As the provincial government strives to realize its vision of resiliency, progress, and happiness for all Nortehanons, we must also ensure that we have a healthy citizenry who can fully enjoy the rewards of development. Through the joint efforts of the Provincial Nutrition Council, the municipal LGUs, non-government organizations, and other stakeholders such as the civil society, 
academe, private sector, and the communities, I am positive that we will achieve our target of eliminating other manifestation of malnutrition among children. We will conduct more activities in order to ensure that our nutrition program is meeting its objectives and the intended beneficiaries will understand and actively take part in this advocacy. Thank you very much, Governor Ong Chuan. It is inspiring to hear of how much you have accomplished despite the difficulties that the pandemic has brought about upon your province. I've also been informed that I think the snacks have also been distributed in your respective areas, so please feel free to enjoy them and uh, as we all listen to the next parts of our program. All right, so at this point, may I now call on our invited reactor, the Regional Director of the DOH Center for Health Development in Eastern Visayas, Dr. Exuperia B. Sabalberino. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My courtesy is to the President of the Zuling Family Foundation, Professor Ernesto Garibal, our dynamic governor of the province of Northern Samar, Governor Edwin Ochoan, and our mayor of the Tapinig Honorable Mayor Maria Luisa Menzon. All others who are joining us online, good afternoon everyone. As we move towards preparing the province for a UFC ready nutrition system, our role together with the NNC holds a very significant part in properly addressing malnutrition problems in the region by reducing the stunting prevalence I would like to commend the province of Northern Samar through the leadership of Governor Edwin Ong Chuan for its realization that malnutrition is not just a number, but something that calls for urgent action. We have put it all together, the significant stakeholders, and bringing the nutrition issues into the regular quarterly LNP meetings. Its realization of the importance of the governance body being properly in place is a big step, is a big step as we move towards the universal health care ready province in the region. The passage and approval of the local policies that would support, would strengthen better implementation of the program like the milk code, the first 1,000 days law, and increased uh, BNS or Barangay Nutrition Scholar Incentives. All those things make a big contribution to achieving Northern Samar's goal of a healthy citizenry who can enjoy the full development of the program. Similarly, I would like to commend Mayor Menzon of Lapini Northern Samar for making nutrition a priority in the midst of pandemic. As influenced by the Zulig Family Foundation Municipal Nutrition Governance Program. Also, with joint technical assistance from NNC and the Department of Health. Realizing the important significance of having a functional expanded Municipal Nutrition Committee and Barangay Nutrition Committee is very important to ensure that the program is implemented according to the vision of the local government team. Putting importance on the creation of the IMNA post, ensuring funds is support for its sustainability of the program, adding incentives of the community volunteers, and passing of relevant policies or actions that would contribute towards better implementation of the program as we move towards UFC implementation in the region. Along with the PGNP and the MNGP journey of Northern Samar and the eight Koika municipalities, the region played a big part in making possible changes in our areas. Through our harmonized and integrated approach, we were able to provide regular coaching to local chief executives and core teams both from the provincial and municipal levels. Conduct dialogue and engagement activities 
with municipalities and relevant stakeholders to establish the first 1,000 days system in their respective local government units. We also provide regular technical mentoring and inputs to local chief executives to emphasize integrating the first 1,000 days into universal health care implementation. We also establish an integrated provincial first 1,000 days service delivery network, develop health and nutrition HR capacity, and meet and train on the first 1,000 days data and information system. All those efforts resulted in putting not just nutrition, but the health and nutrition systems in place. As we go towards a universal health care ready province in the region. With that, our thanks to Koita, UNICEF, Zurich Family Foundation for the assistance extended, not only to the provinces of Samar and Northern Samar, but to the rest of the provinces as well in the region. As we prepare the province for the implementation of universal health care, our commitment is to strengthen our mandate to provide technical support to local government units in achieving better health outcomes and anchor to the regional development plans. As part of universal health care, the region will also provide support in ensuring smooth implementation of the universal health care by helping the province in the development of policies that would strengthen its implementation through the crafting and formulation of the province-wide uh, investment plan for health and the annual operational plans. Likewise, the establishment of primary care providers network and healthcare providers network. With our collaborative and joint efforts, I am challenging our local leaders to do some more leadership acts that can improve and help the nutrition outcomes in the respective LGUs in the region. I look forward to that day where Region 8, especially the province of Northern Samar, will no longer be in the list of those provinces with high standing prevalence. Together with our partners, Let's continue and end all forms of malnutrition in the region. Thank you and maupay nga pulo kaagam Thank you very much, Dr. Sabal Berino. So we have actually learned a lot from the sharings of our mayor and governor from Northern Samar. As Governor Ong Chuan uh, said earlier, he said that public health is of paramount, paramount importance. And that was very much evident as they shared on the nutrition-sensitive and nutrition-specific interventions that they have made. I would, of course, like to highlight as well uh, what they shared, both our Mayor Menzon and Governor Ong Chuan. They shared on the importance of barangays in strengthening nutrition systems and how critical their roles are. The presentation from Lapinig in engaging the barangay leaders proves to be effective in achieving faster outcomes as evidence in the drastic reduction of stunting prevalence. On the other hand, from Governor Ong Chuan, we heard that the policies that ensure that our barangay nutrition scholars, who is the primary focus uh, uh, in the community for nutrition, is also imperative in the long run. So those are just some of the learnings that we have gathered uh, from the presentations earlier. But I'm sure you may also have your own insights that you would like to share as well. So as we mentioned, you can scan the QR code that is provided right here in the screen. And also you can see them in your respective table. So you just scan them and they will lead you to, the, to where you can input your insights for this particular segment. If you, uh, for those who are joining us in Zoom or also via Facebook, you may also input your insights in the comment sections or in the chat box. All right, so we hope to hear from you. And for the, at this point, we will now be going to our next segment. So I'll turn you over back to Sam. Thank you so much, Doc Ellen. And now from Northern Samar, we now go to the western part of the island, the province of Samar. Walk us through the Tarangan experience, focusing on its role of strengthening human resource capacity. May I call on the Mayor, Mayor Arnel Tan of the Municipality of Tarangan.
Um, Tarangnan is a fourth class municipality na uh, mayroong 41 barangays at more than 10 na uh, sitios dito sa kabuuan ng aming bayan. 37 out of 41 barangays is along the coastal way. Marami dito sa amin yung mga mangingisda. Way back 2010, yung municipality of Tarangnan was considered na uh, top 2 sa pinaka-highest ang malnutrition na uh, rate sa lahat ng mga bayan dito sa buong Pilipinas. Noong 2014, yung mga nakaupo na mga namumuli dito sa bayan namin is nagsimulang mag-come up ng mga idea kung paano ma-address yung findings noong 2010 kasi isa rin sa problema namin dito noon walang kalsada kasi. So yung access namin papunta sa sa mga kalapit na city is through sa dagat. Kapag uh, masama yung panahon, uh, dito lang kami. Hindi kami maka-access ng mga pangangailangan namin. Nagkaroon kami ng full-time na MNAW. Walang uh, specific na employee na tumitingin ng nakapokus lang sa nutrition. Noong 2019, nung maupo ako as a mayor, in-strengthen ko pa kung ano yung mga simulan ng father ko. Up to now, Continuous naman yung mga health and nutrition na uh, programs na ginagawa namin. So, importante na yung municipal mayor at yung buong core team is hands-on sa pag-asikaso kung ano man yung mga issues na dapat uh, resolvahin. Yung position ng IMNAW namin is nilagay ko yun sa office of the mayor. Kung halimbawang may mga programs o kailangan i-implement, kami na agad yung direktang mag-uusap. Ang ginawa namin is in-empower din namin yung mga uh, BNSS namin kasi isa yun sa kailangang tutukan, lalong-lalo na sa bawat barangay. So importante yung participation ng mga barangay officials, health workers, tsaka BNS. In-empower namin sila, nagkanda kami ng mga orientations, trainings, sa kung ano mang problema sa bawat barangay. May mga mechanisms kami na ginagawa to monitoring and reporting para mabilis din yung consolidation dito sa amin sa munisipyo. Na-analyze din namin kung ano yung mga data, ano yung mga problems na nag aray sa isang barangay. Sila yung nagbibigay ng lahat ng mga pangangailangan ng mga tao nila kasi nga naka-lockdown kami. Talagang walang labasan kahit yung mga hanap buhay, hindi halos makapaghanap buhay yung mga tao. Na-address din namin yon nutrition problem na hindi kayang ma-resolve ba kasi hindi makakapunta dito sa amin, uh, doon na rin sa barangay mismo. May mga clustered health centers naman kami na nakalagay para kung mga minors lang naman na mga health problem, uh, doon na lang sa kanila. Sa main na uh, program namin na ginawa dito is yung Green Revolution kung saan yung mga tao mismo in-encourage namin sila na magkaroon ng sarili nilang backyard na magtatanim sila doon ng mga gulay. Binibigyan namin sila ng mga seeds. Depende sa pananim, kung tumutubo na siya, seedlings, yun yung binibigyan namin doon sa mga tao na na-encourage na magtanim. Gumawa kami ng contest sa pagandahan o padamihan ng mga na-harvest. Lahat yon may mga incentives kami na binibigay para uh, ma-encourage sila lalo na magtanim. Yung na-harvest nila doon is para naman din sa sarili nilang pamilya. Nung time ng lockdown, mahirap yung pagkain dito sa amin. Hindi nga nakakalabas yung mga tao. Yung ginawa namin is, uh, in-encourage na lang namin yung mga tao na magtanim sa sarili ng backyard. Hindi naman importante na uh, malawak yung backyard nyo. Depende naman, pwede namang vertical na pagtatanim. Meron din yung mga barangay officials, in-encourage namin na uh, sa tabi ng barangay hall nila or kung saan area sa barangay, kung saan yung mga tao na wala talagang area, yung masikip talaga, doon sila magsasama-sama. Doon sila magtatanim tanim, kanya-kanya silang pwesto doon. Kasama na rin yung mga purpose sa uh, beneficiaries. Sila naman yung focus talaga ng government na matulungan kasi sila yung mas nangangailangan. Hindi lang inayaan namin na maghintay lang sila sa dole out ng gobyerno na ayuda. Tinutulungan din namin sila na magkaroon ng libangan. Ay, yung kalinisa naman ng mga bawat barangay, nag-strict implementation kami sa backyard na pigiri kasi isa sa mga major problems din namin noon, dumami yung backyard pigiri sa mga barangay. Yung pagkakaroon ng COD barangays dito sa amin, yung ginawa namin is encourage namin yung mga barangay official na mag-allocate ng budget sa mga kabahayan na walang CR 
Yung LGU rin, yearly kami nagpaprocure ng mga toilet bowls na binibigay namin sa mga bawat bahay na wala pang CR. Yung mga residente, inorient din namin kung ano yung mga dapat gawin para maging uh, malinis yung kapaligiran natin ng yung bahay natin. Ano yung magiging epekto kapag ganito yung mga ginawa natin. Dito kasi sa amin, mayroon kaming local nutrition committee na tumitingin na kailangan yung lahat ng mga nutrition programs namin na i-implement ng maayos. Nakikita namin yung result. Mayroon naman kaming ginagawang mga agreement sa Barangay Nutrition Council din. Ginawa namin, nagkaroon kami ng clearance committee. Siyang nag-check ng budget ng barangay. Yung sa amin lang is pag-push na ma-implement natin ng tama kung ano mang programa na kailangan natin i-implement para ma-uplift yung kalagayan ng mga mamamayan natin. Minomonitor din namin after ilang months, minomonitor namin yung mga implementation ng projects nila. By quarter may ginagawa kaming monitoring yung timeline ba ng programa na ginawa nila ay nasusunod. Yung mga BNS namin, mga health workers, mayroon na din kaming mga retention program na ginagawa. Mayroong limitation din every year. Ina-evaluate namin kung ano yung mga naging performance nila, kung nakakapag-attend sila sa bawat uh, meetings, orientations, trainings, kung pwede pa siyang magpatuloy. Yung mga nilalagay namin na tao sa barangay, sigurado kami na ganda yung giging outcome ng mga programs na i-implement. Nag-undergo sila sa mabusising proseso ng pagpipili kung sino mang tao yung dapat ilagay doon. Yearly, ini-increase namin yung honorarium nila. Mahirap naman kung puro trabaho lang yung ini-increase natin. Kailangan yung incentives maliban sa barangay, meron din sa munisipyo para makapag-boost din ng kanilang confidence na mag mas magpursigi na magtrabaho. May mga ginagawa kaming awards, hindi lang sa best BHW, best Decor worker, best barangay official. Yung recognition na ginagawa namin, mas lalong nakakapag-encourage sila sa kanila na mas magsikap na makapagserbisyo sa mga mamamayan. Uh, internal na modification lang namin, consent siyempre sa DILG namin. Yung magandang strategy para mapursigi yung mga barangay officials na sumama sa mga implementation ng mga programa ng bayan. So yung kasama dito, yung mga frontline na uh, departments sa DILG to make sure nung mga ginagawa nila nakabase sa constitution natin, sa nutrition, sa RHU, sa DA, SWD, to make sure na yung mga uh, basic services kailangan natin i-deliver sa mga residente uh, na ibibigay natin maayos. Ina-explain namin sa kanila, yung mga BNS or BHW natin katulong sa barangay nila sa pag-implement ng mga programa. Pinapakita namin sa mga barangay officials yung kahalagahan na magkaroon ng mga ganitong tao sa barangay nila na makakatulong sa pag-deliver nila ng mga basic services. Nakita namin na nagkaroon ng food security yung mga bawat bahay. May sari-sarili na silang mga plots o sa komunidad. May mapagkukunan na sila na libre at hindi na sila bibili. Sigurado silang masustansya yung kakainin nila kasi sila naman yung nagtanim. Pumaba yung stunting, wasting. Address yung malnutrition problem. Kung dati, number 2 kami sa rank ranking ng nakamalaking malnutrition na bayan. Ngayon, award din na kami sa provincial, sa regional at uh, nakarating na kami sa national. Nagpapasalamat ako sa mga tumutulong sa amin dito sa LGO, lalong-lalo yung UNICEF COICA, ZFF, at yung iba pang mga NGO na pumupunta dito sa amin. Hindi naman namin magagawa lahat ng mga programs na to kung hindi rin sa tulong nila, specifically sa financial, technical, at lahat ng mga paraan para mas mapa-improve namin yung pag-deliver ng services yung kailangan namin ibigay sa aming mga residente. Napakahalaga na ay mga partners tayo na nagiging kasama natin sa pagtupad sa kung ano mang hangarin yung hinahangan ng bawat LGU. Thank you, Mayor Tan of the Municipality of Tarangnan. Indeed, that was a powerful presentation of how the municipalities came into across their nutrition programs. And at, as of this time, we'd also like to thank and acknowledge, celebrate the accomplishments of the municipalities of Pagsanghan, San Jose de Buwan, Santa Margarita, and Gandara, 
and the cities of Katbalogan and Kalbayog for taking part in this journey towards better nutrition for their constituents. At this point, let us now listen to the sharing of the provincial team of SAMAR and learn about their enabling roles in empowering the municipalities and human resource in the province. Let us hear from Governor Reynolds Michael Tan. Thank you and good afternoon. Uh, you might be wondering uh, why I'm on stage. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to have uh, the video recording. Uh, but anyway, good afternoon, everyone. And I will be sharing to you the journey of Samar uh, with regards to nutrition. So uh, Samar is a first class province by income class category, home to a population of 793,183 and consists of 24 municipalities and two cities. Out of the 951 barangays, uh, we have 18% or 167 that are geographically isolated or GDA areas. The nutrition situation of Samar, uh, while efforts were made to improve the health outcomes of the province, malnutrition remains to be one of the pressing challenges, especially among the pregnant women and children under five years old. The province has the highest stunting prevalence in the entire Eastern Visayas region, and in, the tw in 2019, data of the National Nutrition Council 29.4 or 3 out of 10 under 5 children in Samar are stunted. Seven municipalities out of the 26 LGUs in Samar were included in the top 10 municipalities in the region with the highest stunting prevalence. Uh, during that time, uh, we were lucky enough to, be, to have been included to this program uh, because at that time, before joining the Provincial Nutrition Governance Program, I was too keen about the extent of health and nutrition challenge in the province. I even thought that malnutrition is all about feeding children. But I learned that it is more than that. Improving the nutrition situation of the province proved to be more challenging, challenging and complex than I had imagined. When I went through the deep dive in Barangay Rosalim, San Jorge, Samar, I was surprised to learn of a family having numerous problems. Their child, Alfie, was malnourished. The father was jobless. They are living in a house not their own. They do not have access to safe water and sanitary toilet, among others. I realized that baby Alfie's sickly condition and stunted physique is a manifestation of enormous interdependent factors that needed urgent attention and collective action. My worry was that was that there could not be a lot there could be a lot of Alfies in the summer. As a father myself. The experience made me feel strongly about the situation of Alfie's struggling father, who appeared to be helpless. Considering this, and upon learning that poor nutrition within the first 1,000 days of life predisposes one to adult onset diseases and missed opportunities in life in the long run, I have been prov proving, providing considerably attention, considerable attention and resources to initiatives that promote good nutrition. In my dialogue with the municipal, city, and barangay leaders, myriad of challenges emerged. They were not aware that, muni that the municipality, uh, being San Jorge, has the highest stunting prevalence in the region. 
This reinforced my observation that there is a gap in the information. During that time, when we were, when we had our self-evaluation, most of the LGUs have non-functional nutrition, uh, local nutrition committees, thereby no avenue for the municipalities to discuss nutrition concerns comprehensively. Quality of data is not ensured because of limited number of measurement tools. At the municipality and city level, most of the nutrition action officers or NAUs are designated only and work on top of other official functions. Only LGUs out of the 26 have designated full-time MNAUs. Around 300 barangay nutrition scholars do not have proper training, especially the new ones. Looking at our data from 2017 to 2019, before the Provincial Nutrition Governance Program started, stunting and wasting were both declining, but much has to be done. A significant reduction and reach the national target. Since 2007 to 2019, there was, there was only 1% reduction of stunting in the province per annum a 1% for the entire uh, two, two or three years. When the program started, the province targeted a four percentage point reduction in stunting prevalence per, month, per year. While we are yet to reach if the four percentage point reduction per year as targeted, we were able to reach 4.6 percentage point reduction in two years, meeting national target for stunting and wasting. Our coverage for Operation uh, Timbang has also improved. More children are being assessed and giving intervention. So uh, we've started our journey and we've started it with target targeting and uh, targeting. So uh, like I said earlier, we started and targeted a 4% point reduction per annum. So this has helped monitor our progress. And upon the review of our roadmap with the department's he heads, we identified action points to turn the red to yellow and yellow to green. I asked the team to provide all the required trainings for the Provincial Nutrition Committee and health workers. Delays in procurement and requests were also addressed. And during the Provincial Development Council, I presented the provincial and municipal city data on nutrition of the entire province to the LCEs. This created awareness in the part of the LCEs on the status of nutrition in the respective LGUs. The province provided support to the family of Alfie through the provision of necessities such as a decent home, basic health services and livelihood assistance, in a whole of government approach, the Samar State University was tapped for architectural design of the Balaini Alfi, AFP, and manpower for the manpower complementation and construction of the house, DTI for business package, TESDA for skills training of parents, DepEd for enrollment of parents to ALS or alternative learning system, PSWDO for monthly assistance, BLGU, for water and electrification, nutrition and health uh, office for the monitoring, even the municipal government for the uh, lot security of uh, the established house. The initiative was done to emphasize the need for collaborative effort in solving malnutrition. So, uh, much of work, uh, actually, I emphasize the, the Balaini Alfi uh, because uh, during that time, I worked with the different NGAs, including the ones that are part of the local LGUs, to emphasize to them that we, ha we need to do a collective effort and to solve this not only 
as a nutrition problem or health problem, but a whole systematic effort because this is also a systematic problem. So during that time, I was happy because uh, the Balayne Alfi program uh, was a success, although more can be, uh, can be done. The first thing that I did was to ensure the budget also for the program uh, to be secured. We increased the budget uh, for nutrition from 9 million pesos in 2020 to 14 million pesos in the year 2021. The province provided support to empower the BNS by giving them their uh, incentives. In 2021, 1.5 million pesos was provided for incentives of 1,099 BNS for augmentation to the barangay and municipal honorarium. On top of this, I also provided approved the provision of annual performance-based incentives to empower our frontline community workers and recognize them for their performances. 2,500 pesos shall be given to the BNS who would reach an overall rating of at least 85% of criteria for the BNS set by the Nutrition Council. Since one of the identified challenges of the province at the start of the program was the ad inadequate number of quality measurement tools and equipment, I asked the PINAO to do an inventory and procure these tools. In total, 120 height ports were distributed to barangays and weigh weighing scales are underway. The province also initiated a 20-day job on the job practicum for BNS as prerequisite for their basic training course among others. The province advocated to the LCS, LCS the three-point agenda for nutrition, which are assigning full-time M now or C now, developing a comprehensive and integrated local nutrition plan with budget, and setting up their own nutrition office. Furthermore, with the support of DOH and NC8, UNICEF, COICA, CFF, and other partners during the planning workshop, LGUs crafted their comprehensive plans for nutrition, and one LGU created an item for a nutrition officer waiting to be filled up, and three, three LGUs are with approved plan for nutrition officers. So the province likewise formed the provincial nutrition uh, evaluation team through an executive order to conduct the monitoring evaluation of local level implementation. And in 2021, 16 LGUs were monitored and mentored by the provincial nutrition uh, team. Uh, we also uh, incentivized uh, the zero op uh, zero open defecation municipality. So there were zero municipalities and city in 2019 na ZOD and uh, as of 2021 there were six municipalities that are certified COD and more is yet to come. So we incentivized them with 100,000 uh, pesos from the PLGU uh, so uh, this was uh, in addition to what they will get from the region. And the province also continue, is continuing the implementation of the Greenlyhood program, which provides agricultural assistance and seedlings for our urban and backyard farming and incentive, intensive training on vegetable production. So now, with the efforts of our stakeholders, we have improved our roadmap on nutrition. Investment for nutrition has increased. Our health and nutrition workers are more equipped with skills to provide needed to serve uh, needed services to children and mothers. So there are more challenges now remaining, but much has to be done. So children's will be could be further improved if reach 
and access for prenatal consultation, child immunization, adolescent health programs, and services are strengthened. In the recent, in the recent review of uh, disaggregated data from 2000, for 2021, stunting prevalence is higher among the group of uh, 12 to 59 months compared to 0 to 11. Attention would have to be given to this 12 to 59 months to promote complementary feeding and add, address their needs. So our ways forward, uh, we are now on the finalization uh, of the uh, complementary food production uh, Shall we say factory by Amy? <laughs> uh, with, uh, because the OSD has given us funds uh, to do this. And we are also uh, relevant to the, um, to the Greenhood program. Uh, we were able to establish a, uh, a local group of young uh, adults that are now engaged to farming, so they will be the one to produce uh, the complementary food. Uh, furthermore, the province continues to implement, as I've mentioned, the Greenhood program. This, uh, the province made this program nutrition sensitive by including families of malnourished children as beneficiaries of the veggie quail egg production. And lately, lastly, the, the Tatak Tangkad program, the province hopes to widen the reach of advocacy for nutrition and improve the early identification and referral of adolescent pregnant mothers with the mobilization of adolescent F1KD navigators. This aims also to improve <coughs> the access of malnourished children and mothers to services on not just the nutrition specific but also the nutrition sensitive and social services through the referral to different programs of the government. So uh, on behalf of the Samar Provincial Team, I would like to thank our development partners, UNICEF, COICA, Zwilig Family Foundation, World Vision, and Nutrition Center of the Philippines for supporting the province in bringing better nutrition for our Mothers and the children of Samar. Hayung atanan maupay po ng kulub. Very much, Governor Tan of the province of Samar. Truly achieving these nutrition outcomes wouldn't be possible without collaborative efforts of the stakeholders involved in the area. And as you said, much has been done, but much more will be done prospectively. Thank you so much once again, Governor Tan. At this point, we will hear the response and message of support from the Regional Nutrition Program Coordinator of National Nutrition Council, Eastern Visayas Region, Dr. Catalino Dottolio Jr. My respect to the men and women of Swailing Family Foundation, COICA and UNICEF, and likewise to the chairperson of the Regional Nutrition Committee and DOH Eastern Visayas Regional Director, Dr. Exoperia B. Sabalbareno, to Governor Reynolds Michael Tan of the province of Samar, and Municipal Mayor of Tarangnan, Honorable Arnel Tan, and the respective nutrition committees, good afternoon. The public health burden of malnutrition remains heavy and widespread. Eastern Visayas is no exception, particularly the province of Samar. Its predictors are well documented, including political will and quality of crafted local policies and programs anchored on national issuances and directives. The odds of stunting are higher in children born in low-income households compared to that from higher income. That highlights inequalities not just in income, but also in access to and use of health and nutrition services. The concept of leadership and good 
governance provide a springboard for the probing the long menu of institutional changes including investment in nutrition, capacity building initiatives, support to human resources for health and nutrition, effective and implementable policies and plans that are important and essential for development. Nutrition leadership and governance focus on nutrition improvement received little or limited attention. The critical gap then remains understanding the effectiveness of leadership and good governance in nutrition with focus on essentials, policy, quality of data and information, capacity, resources, coordination, and collaboration in achieving nutrition outcomes at the local levels. A case in point for the Mar province under the leadership of Governor Reynolds Michael Tan, who recognizing the immense problem of stunting in the province. He had thought once that feeding malnourished children and mothers is the only solution to the problem of malnutrition. Not until his community immersion under the Provincial Nutrition Governance Program of the Israeli Family Foundation, that problem of malnutrition is more than feeding and realizes malnutrition is multifactorial in nature that needs integrated and multi-sectoral approach to solve the problem. The governor to a Provincial Development Council meeting informs Mayor under his watch the immense problem of stunting that made local chief executive aware of the nutritional status of the respective LGUs. Of the respective LGUs. As governor, his first action is setting an enabling environment that would strengthen the LGUs scaled up health and nutrition service provision. This included expanding the membership of the Provincial Nutrition Committee and an updated and approved comprehensive Provincial Development and Physical Framework Plan or PDPFP embedded in it is also a comprehensive Provincial Nutrition Action Plan highlighting first 1,000 days program. Securing higher nutrition investments from 9 million in 2020 to 14 million in 2021 created a separate nutrition office with full-time Provincial Nutrition Action Officer and a support staff and a separate budget, thereby empowering PNAO and nutrition workers to implement nutrition interventions with ease and according to him, elbow room to uniquely strategize this identified intervention. Provided financial support to frontline workers such as city, and Municipal Nutrition Action Officers, District City Nutrition Program Coordinators, and including our Barangay Nutrition Scholars. Provision of anthropometric tools to effectively monitor nutritional status of children and mothers in every barangays for, the belief, for he believes quality data is important in nutrition planning and budgeting. Support to capacity building activities among health and nutrition workers at all levels and interagency monitoring and evaluation with nutrition mentoring and coaching by the provincial nutrition evaluation team. On top of this, and realizing that majority of the local government units of the province has non-functional local nutrition committees, sector-specific and disintegrated nutrition plans, with limited budget, he advocated a three-point agenda to the local chief executive. Number one, assigning a full-time city and municipal nutrition action officer, formulating a comprehensive and integrating local nutrition action plans with budgets, setting up a separate nutrition office. All of these efforts are highly commendable and noteworthy. On the other hand, the municipality of Tarangnan is a show window not only in Samar but in the entire Eastern Visayas in terms of its unique leadership and governance on nutrition spearheaded by Mayor Arnel Tan. To date, the municipality has a officer and a separate budget. 
the Municipal Nutrition Action Plan is integrated and multi-sectoral and well-invested in terms of nutrition-specific, nutrition-sensitive, and an enabling program interventions as highlighted in the Mayor's public narrative. All of this helped the municipality from being on top of malnutrition prevalence in the province and in Eastern Visayas to one achieving better nutrition outcomes. Moving forward, recognizing the importance of the first 1,000 days in improving stunting prevalence in Samar province, a unique brand of the first 1,000 days program was formulated, dubbed Tataktangkad, Samar's first 1,000 days program, is a framework that highlights an integrated and multi-sectoral approach to solving stunting in the entire province. As for the nutrition count, National Nutrition Council, together with the Department of Health and other nutrition stakeholders, provided the province and its component local government units technical and some financial assistance along leadership and governance, capacity building activities and, and programs and politics, policies for adoption which led to improvement of nutrition outcomes in the province. What contributed lot was the harmonized province-wide provincial city municipal nutrition action planning workshop and integrating it in the respective annual investment programs facilitated by the National Nutrition Council Region 8 together with the members of the Regional Technical Working Group and funded by our development partners, COICA and UNICEF. The last more than two years of the pandemic, we at the region did not dampen our spirit amidst the virus and continue to provide technical assistance to the province and I personally thank the untiring efforts of the regional line agencies, non-government organizations, media, academic institutions, and development partners. Our metrics, while showing an improvement in nutrition outcomes, has to work double time, harmonize if not synchronize our efforts, pool our financial resources and mobilize our local government units and its workforce if we are to achieve our nutrition goals anchored on the Regional Plan of Action for Nutrition and the Regional Development Plan. The National Nutrition Council, through the Regional Nutrition Committee, has a lot more to offer in the coming days in close coordination with the local government units. We will continue to provide guidance in terms of regional or localized health and nutrition policies toward the achievement of a better nutrition outcomes. There are a lot more of nutrition stake in the waiting. Policies in ECCD first 1,000 days in response to the implementation of Republic Act 11148 or the Kalusugan at Nutrition ng Magnanay Act. Nutrition Shepherding, Learning Hub for Enhanced Nutrition, Scaling Up Nutrition Movement, Tutukainan Dietary Supplementation Program for both nutritionally at risk pregnant women and 6 to 23 months children, which we aim to be institutionalized by the respective local government units in 2024 and beyond, and the formulation of a, a successor PIPAN 2022 to 2028 to be cascaded to our barangay, municipal, city, and provincial nutrition action plan, also guided by the Regional Plan of Action for Nutrition 2023-2028. I am happy that the region is moving forward towards the integration of early childhood care and development for the first 1,000 days program anchored on Republic Act 11148 in the universal health care through the respective provincial-wide investment program for health. We, all, we will also continue to lobby to our local chief executives the creation of permanent nutrition plantilla position and a nutrition office to be incorporated in your de devolution transition plan this year and until 2024 and even beyond.
Another case in point in the province of Samar and the municipality of Tarangnan. We will continue advocating to COVIDizing and F1K denizing your nutrition action plan. Together, let us achieve better health and nutrition outcomes and make Eastern Visayas home of the healthiest. Sama-sama nating wakasan ang kahirapan, gutom at malnutrition. Let us join hands and shout out as we move forward towards our new battle cry. Nutrisyong sapat para sa lahat. Congratulations and damo nga salamat. Thank you so much, Dr. Catalino de Tolio, Regional Nutrition Program Coordinator for Region 8. Capping off from the sharings of the province of Samar, it was emphasized that the presence of dedicated and full-time and now or Municipal Nutrition Action Officer is vital to ensure that nutrition-specific and sensitive programs are being accounted for. The Tarangnan experience is an is an indicator that the movement of the nutrition-specific and sensitive services entails warm bodies. Furthermore, the support of the province of Samar in providing capacity building and incentives for MNAOs is a great move to ensure that human resource for nutrition is given value. Once again, we invite everyone to please refer to your screens because we have the QR code where you can input your insights and share your thoughts on this matter. Also, we are inviting those who are on site. Meron po tayong QR code din na nakalagay sa respective tables natin for you to also share your thoughts on this. All right. So thank you for that, Sam. That was another interesting segment wherein we learned a lot of things. And as we all know, all of these efforts that are being done when it comes to nutrition systems will ultimately contribute to the attainment of universal health care. Because we know that attainment of universal health care cannot be fully achieved without ensuring that everyone has access to quality nutrition services. So now let us all listen to Dr. Maria Ofelia Alcantara the outgoing mayor of Tolosa, Leyte, as she shares the efforts and learnings in integrating nutrition and F1KD in the context of universal health care. The floor is yours, Dr. Ophel. Good afternoon to all of us and congratulations to all of us and especially with the organizer and our technical assistance provider, CFF and UNICEF and also of course with the Department of Health and NNC and our very important stakeholders in nutrition or partners, the local government unit. We at the local government unit who, are, who have the administrative authority to implement and provide services, to implement the nutrition program and improve the nutritional outcome in our locality. And today I will be presenting UHC Ready Nutrition System. Uh, Nagumpisa ito when we had a uh, workshop uh, using uh, from where we are, from what are the current realities and the prepared uh, re realities of the nutrition program and how this program can be translated to services to our constituents. Uh, the context is the universal healthcare law with the three integration. The first is uh, technical uh, integration, meaning the services that should be provided from all levels of care and also at all stages of life. Uh, so what are these nutrition life stages services from prevention, detection, treatment, and rehabilita rehabilitation? and the population services, which is uh, basically the health promotion and surveillance. And with the part of the technical integration is also the intersectoral participation, especially uh, the joint DOH and NC providing technical assistance to the local government 
units uh, from the province, uh, which is province-wide and also in the city, city-wide, and also investment in the municipalities. And also partnership with NGAs there, and of course the private sector and the CSOs. The second integration is on the managerial integration. Now we need to look at ano yung landscape ng province-wide uh, healthcare provider network at saka yung APEX. And also, what are the uh, important interventions that are or components that are available or uh, seen in our province-wide healthcare provider network? Uh, from the community, we have the primary care provider network and also with the hospitals that form the healthcare provider network. And very crucial here is what is the landscape of the healthcare provider network from the health facilities, from the BHS, RHUs, and to the hospitals, and also to the APEX and specialty facility kung kailangan i-refer ang patient. The second uh, component uh, is the health human resource, the qualified, competent to provide nutrition service at different levels, and also, the health information system and uh, the records of the patient, the uh, data registry, among others, and the connectivity and interoperability of our uh, different uh, facilities and also uh, the patient home we serve or the people home we, we will be providing the nutrition services. And also, uh, techno the health technology assessment, sound technology that will be used for the nutrition program and, of course, the medicine and commodity access for our nutrition. The third integration is the financing. This is the one that will sustain the business of providing nutrition services. Of course, we need the financing to sustain the provision of services as well as uh, to sustain the program. And one uh, opportunity in the universal health care is the universal national health insurance, meaning to say everybody is covered, eligible sila lahat at na uh, registro natin, especially it's the start with the consulta package and uh, as, na, as an eligible member for NHSIP. I uh, need also to look at accreditation of our health facilities uh, not just to license them, either primary care facility or hospitals or APEX. They need to accredit so that PhilHealth can, can uh, uh, pay the services that has been delivered by these facilities. And also a tracking of the claims and utilization and that will be um, uh, provided to the local government, uh, especially when the special health fund will be provided to the city and the province uh, as part of the universal health care financing integration. But most uh, uh, most importantly is uh, the local health finance, meaning that the requirement, uh, we have identified the requirement for nutrition program and to provide nutrition services, how we will generate this and allocate and utilize this for our nutrition program to deliver the services and to track this financing. That's also to make sure that ang ating mga constituents ay supposed to be bayad na sila. So aside from the National Health Insurance Program, uh, the Malasakit Center or the DOH uh, Medical Assistance Program can uh, augment or uh, provide the, the, uh, the additional uh, financing requirement uh, to ensure that there uh, there is no balance bill. Uh, the second consideration is the EO138, the Mandanas ruling or the transition devolution uh, that all the local government has uh, worked with DBM, the ILG, and also with the different national government agencies uh, to have this full devolution um, uh, implemented for this year. It's the first year, second year, next year, and on the third year. Uh, to look how this universal healthcare will be operationalized using this nutrition program as a template for the our local trend devolution plan and the capacity development agenda and also in developing communication and strategies. 
to operationalize this, uh, we have defined the services that is harmonized, comprehensive, integrated, and uh, this uh, nutrition services leads to a healthy and well individual and also lead to good uh, socioeconomic uh, uh, development for our communities and also providing of the vulnerable groups so that they will be prioritized as well. And these services and the patient pathway. And also systems, uh, we have defined 10 systems uh, to include organizational institutional building, data management, health human resource, capacity building, IEC, financial fund management, community and logistics management, community empowerment and infrastructure coordinating mechanism. These are the systems that will make our universal healthcare uh, nutri uh, ready nutrition. Better health better nutrition outcome. First is the organizational and institutional building. Then we will look at five uh, uh, intervention or system. First is the data management information. This is very important uh, from the data registry and also a very important for policy and program enhancement. Then second on the logistic management. There, this is always a problem. The access and the uh, the the ensuring that we the logistics are available for the nutrition program. Uh, the third is the landscape of the healthcare providers network. Like for example, in Samar and in all the other provinces and cities, ano ba ang healthcare providers network niya? Saan yung mga pasyente naka naka assign ng mga facilities at saka ano yung kanilang services na dapat ma-avail according to their life stage yung appropriate services so these are health guarantees that needs to be provided to our constituents in these facilities or healthcare providers network uh, the fourth is the community empowerment this is also um, one very important system th so that in the community they are empowered or involved uh, in the nutrition programs. And last system is the behavioral change communication and IEC. Uh, well, ang inform information ngayon, ang dami, dami, and that's one of the sinasabi nga natin, infodemics. But what are the information that will be uh, provided at the family level, facility level, at different levels so that the health-seeking behavior will be improved. Uh, very quickly, I'll just do some adaptive and innovative intervention for these uh, systems. First, in the organizational, the governance. Second is the structure. We have local health board, provincial health board, uh, and also provincial nutrition council, regional nutrition council, and third policies and laws and the, uh, the local health code uh, that's in the province or municipalities and cities. The second on data management uh, to include first data management on the registry, collection, utilization, and analysis. Uh, second on data policy, sound laws and local policies as needed and data for development with partners to improve our socio, social services to economic development and fourth, an ICT that is interoperability, connectivity, and we have a dashboard to monitor. On the logistics management, of course, uh, procurement, uh, I know this is always a problem, but we can do something or mitigate, uh, so make sure that either we're advanced or in time procurement so that the goods and and commodities are available. Next is the allocation and utilization of the goods and products for nutrition program to include warehousing and of course the value added supply chains that uh, will facilitate the provision of nutrition services and improve the nutrition outcome. And uh, fourth is the landscape. Uh, so first is the healthcare provider network matching the families with providers. Second, 
health facility enhancement programs on ito na different uh, in in the different provinces and cities the health human resource availability of the hr and also its competency their competencies the health information system to include electronic medical record the services and the convenient services for our clients and the last is the medicine access to include other commodities for community empowerment uh, these are some interventions uh, that uh, we have defined the primary health care approach 90% community managed and only 10% goes to the next level or hospital or apex uh, community empowerment and involvement and the CSOs that will be our uh, development partners at the community and last the BCC and IEC a nutrition complaint sound with the data that we have uh, aligned to the policies and universal health care the BHW and BNS as information providers and of course the venue or the vehicle, social media and multimedia to deliver the nutrition uh, messages. Uh, from the 10 that we have identified, the six uh, interventions, uh, we, uh, adaptive and innovative interventions, uh, we can look into this uh, as part of our uh, nutrition, program ready for universal health care localization and operationalization and uh, we're hoping in uh, that these interventions these are sharings this can be customized and localized in your respective and you can have other uh, innovative intervention that you want uh, but this one uh, this six are the one that we identified during the workshop coming from the 10 systems that we have identified. So this, uh, maraming salamat po, good day, and have a blessed day. Thank you very much, Dr. Ophel, for that very informative presentation. It was really helpful to learn about the integration of nutrition and UHC at the technical, managerial, and uh, financial levels. The points also provided on how to operationalize it through services systems, monitoring, and evaluation, I believe would also be very helpful for our LGs present here today. So thank you very much for that, Doc Ophel. So at this moment, to sum up all of the key points that we've heard from the presentations, let's now all watch this video showcasing the journey of our partner LGUs in addressing malnutrition focusing on the seven critical knobs to achieve better nutrition outcomes faster and towards the attainment of universal health care. The baseline study of the Nutrition Center of the Philippines conducted in 2019 in the provinces of Zamboanga del Norte, Samar and Northern Samar shows the nutritional status of children 0 to 59 months old in the three provinces. About 3 in 10 children in all three provinces were stunted, while about 1 in 20 children are wasted across the three provinces. The first 1,000 days of life refers to the period of a child's life spanning the nine months in the womb, starting from the conception to the first 24 months of life, which is considered to be the critical window of opportunity to promote health and development and prevent malnutrition and its lifelong consequences. The first 1,000 days is considered as the golden window of opportunity where critical needs of pregnant women and 0 to 23 months old child should be given priority. If neglected, the effect is irreversible. In the provinces of Zamboanga del Norte, Samar and Northern Samar, several contributory factors were identified on the high prevalence of malnutrition, especially stunting. Well, before I came in, you know, the most uh, challenging problem that we encountered is the insurgency problem. Nahihirapan po yung mga barangay nutrition scholars po namin na pumunta sa far-flung areas. Kasama na rin po yung pandemic. Ito po yung mga na encounter ng aming team sa nutrition. Napansin ko po when we assumed office, parang walang continuity yung aming nutrition program. Dahil tuwing may change of administration, yung mga 
barangay nutrition scholars at mga barangay health workers mukhang napapalitan. Noon dito sa Bubon, hindi talaga priority ang mga programa ng nutrition sa mga barangay. At dahil hindi nga ito ang priority, hindi ito nabibigyan ng sapat na pondo. Hindi pangsyonal ang mga barangay nutrition committee. Kaya walang aktwal na pag-uusap at partisipasyon kung ano ba ang tungkulin ng bawat membro ng committee sa problema ng malnutrition. Well, before, uh, with regards to nutrition, actually, I really did not know as to the uh, magnitude of the problem uh, regarding nutrition here in, the, in our province. I really thought that uh, programs uh, such as nutrition is more of uh, feeding the kids. When I was uh, a member of the Sangonian Bayan, I was then the always the chairman on committee on appropriation. Ang tinitingnan ko lang doon kung may nakasama sa budget yung para sa uh, annual celebration, nutrition uh, activities, yung feeding, yung vitamins, ano. Katapos noon wala na. Without uh, making uh, follow up or uh, inquiring kung anong nangyari. Kaya na-overlook yung nutrition program dito sa bayan namin kasi walang uh, specific na employee na tumitingin ng nakapokus lang sa nutrition. So ang nutrition kasi masyadong napakalawak ang scope niya na kung papalit-palit yung nilalagay natin o kahit sinong employee parang hindi makukontinuous kung ano yung mga program na nasisimulan. When we assist again the health and nutrition system using the ip one kd technical roadmap, ang dami palang kulang. Ang dami pang dapat gagawin para mapabuti ang nutrition system namin to address the health and nutrition needs of our mothers and children. Kilala ang siyayan sa pinakapuris na munisipyo noon. Although may malaking improvement na pero meron pa ring hindi naabot ng programa ng gobyerno dahil sa kalayuan ng mga sitio at terrain ng lugar. The COVID-19 pandemic has restricted our mobility to provide technical assistance to the local government units. Face-to-face -face interactions and gatherings were also prohibited and virtual means of communications, meetings, trainings became our new normal. Seven critical knobs were identified as a startup strategy in improving the nutrition system. These include functional nutrition and health committees, identification of priority population, increased investments for health and nutrition, responsive nutrition communication and advocacy campaign, improved capacities of health workers, social protection for vulnerable families, and increased food production, diversity, and access. My dream is through our flagship program or EGBU or Enhanced Gasang Badianon Sa Umahan, there will be improvement in the lives of the people, particularly that of the vulnerable population. There will be food in every table with no one getting hungry. For now, we have EGBU communities in 350 barangays. Malaki ang pasasalamat ko sa Igbo. Ito ay nagbibigay sa amin ng dagdag na kita. Sa Igbo, binigyan din kami ng seedlings na angkop sa lupa namin, mga ikipo at tinuroan kami ng bagong paraan para maitaguyod namin ang aming communal farm. Yung sa MNOW naman, they receive incentive quarterly. Another one is we do hold regular meeting with them. That's the venue for their learning exchange of all the issues, the challenges that they are encountering in the field. We really have to capacitate our MNOW as also include the as frontliners eh. Yung una natin ginawa is to uh, increase the budget allocation. First, to ask them kung ano ba talaga yung kailangan nila. 
So we tried also yung different approach mo na incentivization as to the accomplishments that they have been doing for its submission to the Provincial Nutrition Action Officer. In 2021, we launched the Complementary Food Production Center in collaboration with the Department of Science and Technology in the municipality of Rojas. With the operationalization of our food production center, we can be assured of a continuous supply of food products for our malnourished children. It was also planned that raw materials like rice and mongo will be supplied or bought from the AGBO communities. So, yung PNET po, through the um, Local Nutrition Council, which is the Provi Summer Provincial Nutrition Council, binuo siya to, um, for the monitoring and evaluation of all um, nutrition programs at the local level sa mga MLGs natin. Nung binuo po yung PNET, uh, we decided na yung, yung members ng PNET is the same as the um, Provincial Nutrition Council. Ito po yung tool na ginamit namin to monitor and evaluate yung mga um, MLGs natin, yung cities and municipalities. So through this um, tool, nakita ng mga MLGs kung ano yung mga lapses nila. Kakaroon ng feedbacking wherein lahat ng agencies na member ng um, Local Nutrition Council for the MLGs umaaten plus si mayor, mga mayors natin, mga LCEs. So through the feedbacking, nakikita ni mayor kung ano yung mga lapses ng mga implementation ng nutrition programs nila. Maglagay tayo ng tututok talaga dahil hindi kaya ng LCE ito. The first thing that we did was to expand our provincial nutrition team through a provincial ordinance and we encourage our BNS to focus on their work by increasing their salaries and wages and uh, honorariums. Nakikita ko isang paraan dyan is through a provincial ordinance securing the terms ng mga ating BNS at BHW. Kasi sila na po yung nakakakilala kung sino po yung may mga sakit, kung sino po yung mga malnourished na mga bata, kung sino po yung mga buntis. Ito po yung nakikita ko na isang makakatulong para ma ma-sustain or ma-improve ang ating uh, nutrition program. Malaking tulong ang Barangay Nutrition Governance Program, Bridging Leadership for Nutrition and Development, nga ginawa ng core team sa Barangay Leaders. Dahil sa training at regular na monitoring na enhance ang Barangay Nutrition Action Plan, lahat ng barangays with secured funding. As the technical authority in health and nutrition, the role of the regional partners, both DOH, CHD, and NNC, are critical for the LGUs to provide timely and quality services in nutrition. We opted to maximize the online platform by coming up with a program called Caravan or Coaching, Assisting, and Reaching Advocates virtually to advance in nutrition, to continuously provide technical assistance, mentoring, and coaching in this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. Nakaparticipate ako sa OPT Plus at MIWAC training sa pamagitan ng karaban. Dahil dito, naisagawa ko ng maayos ang aking trabaho bilang BNS. Aside from giving continuous technical assistance on health and nutrition, We've initially started the workshop on integrating F1 KD and nutrition to universal health care. This is very timely since it is essential that health and nutrition services are accessible at all levels. In this case, the primary care providers network and eventually health care providers network. Our technical assistance support in nutrition for the provinces will gear towards universal health care implementation. With these milestones that our nutrition champions have in making our F1KD a nutrition system more responsive to the needs of the vulnerable population, they are now ready to sustain the gains in new heights. I am hopeful that what my administration has started will be sustained and improved in the coming years. That also one of the reasons why the EGBU, we work directly with the community so that with changes of leadership, communities remain empowered. At the moment, we are formalizing Farmers' Federation. We are also thankful that there are some organizations 
which are willing to assist us in our food security program. Now that I have been elected as uh, legislator para dito sa second district, uh, I want to institutionalize yung BNS and maging permanent position siya. In 2019, the budget was a measly 2.7 million pesos. And for 2022, it's now 17 million pesos. Importante po dito na synchronize ang probinsya at ang mga munisipyo. It should be a joint effort. Aside from the awareness, dapat po mabigyan po ng halaga ang effort ng mga ating BNS. At hindi lang po BNS, pati po ang mga BHW. Dapat hand in hand po sila. Three provinces, one goal. Reduce stunting prevalence. Let's move forward towards a UHC-ready nutrition system. Alright, so I hope you were able to take note of the highlights of this afternoon's presentations using that video. Now, at this part of the colloquium, we will now hear from our partners who share the mission of addressing malnutrition and the goal of ensuring healthy lives for all. So we will be listening to a series of statements of support for nutrition. So first, let's hear from Dr. Beverly Lorraine Siho, the Director of the Disease Prevention and Control Bureau of the Department of Health. A UHC-ready nutrition system is one that has primary care as its bedrock, where our people's exposure to risk, whether it is social, economic, physical, or behavioral, are reduced and our people are taken care of when they need it. The first 1,000 days strategy is primary health care. It emphasizes the importance of multi-sectoral strategies to address the most basic needs of mothers and children. And I know all of us in this room know this. by the information available to the family and the community, by access to healthy, diverse, and nutritious food, by income-generating opportunities, and the families, especially women's sustained ability to access quality, basic health care and social welfare services without the perception that these are financial burdens that will affect the family. These synergistic interventions can only happen when powered by enlightened leadership. You have the immense potential of reducing maternal and child mortalities and morbidities, stunting, hunger, and even break the intergenerational cycle of malnutrition and poverty and increase the quality of lives of future generations. An investment in nutrition is a smart investment. Global estimates note that for every dollar invested in these nutrition interventions, we would yield 4 to 35 times the return. To this end, we ask our leaders, you, to fully implement the UHC law and the devolution transition plan so that hand in hand, we can make this dream a reality. First, design policies, programs, and systems intentionally to maximize benefits of synergized multi-sectoral action. Nutrition is as much linked to education, health, social welfare, agriculture, and economics. Second, use the increases in national tax allocation from the DTP um, as an incentive to continue investments um, for our mothers and children and foster their own development to contribute to the human capital index of your localities. And third, equally invest in health and social welfare human resources, both in facilities and those based in communities. You know, a happy and content army of public servants and volunteers who moved in an environment where consistency and innovation are rewarded are undeniably valuable investments um, that can deliver near or far. You are here because you have done a lot already, but we need to do more and we need to do them faster so that we may take what we learn in this colloquium and that we can do better than the examples that we have seen. We are grateful for our partners in the Zwilig Family Foundation for the transformative program you have gifted the health sector with and for everything that you continue to do. 
Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat, mga public servants, sa inyong serbisyo at magtulungan pa tayo para po sa Healthy Pilipinas. Thank you very much for that, Dr. Ho. And now, we will hear from Dr. Joshua Brillantes, Regional Director of DOH Center for Health Development, Zamboanga Peninsula. May I call him Dr. Brillantes? Buenos dias a todos. Magandang hapon sa lahat. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. With great honor and pleasure, I am delighted to witness and be part of this gathering, which is the colloquium. May I take this opportunity to convey my continued support and congratulatory for an effective and successful implementation of the Provincial Nutrition Governance Program of Sambuanga del Norte and also to the rest of the provinces and the municipalities through the launch project of UNICEF, Zueli Family Foundation, the COICA, as well as the main drivers of health and nutrition system at the local go government, especially um, to the governor of Sambuanga del Norte, our province, Honorable Roberto Uy, the city and municipal mayors, and to the rest of the governors and the members of the nutrition core team. I am deeply grateful in spite of the challenges of today's uncertain times as brought about by this COVID-19 pandemic. From managing pandemic response, still we were able to implement the RNGP in the region. The question is how we did harmonize the first 1,000 days services and help the province in moving towards universal health care. It is a great initiative towards implementing an integrated and comprehensive approach for the delivery of maternal, infant, child, adolescent nutrition, and health services in the first 1,000 days of life, a unique period and a critical window of opportunity to shape a child's development and survival. Through the testimonies and manifestations we have seen and heard this afternoon, part of the mi milestone is to celebrate success and to learn from the achievements and the addressing gaps. The achievements that you have bring, that you have learned will bring closer to the achievements of the universal health care. And these are integration, accessibility to nutrition, and affordability, especially on the presentation of our governor, which is the IGBO, which composed of local local products in the community. So we can achieve better nutrition and health outcomes through strengthened leadership and governance in nutrition across all levels. Integration of nutrition and health programs have helped in the implementation by increasing the leadership and technical capacities of the local nutrition leaders, officials, and workers, and also expands multi-sectoral engagements to scale up nutrition interventions. As the regional and local nutrition core team has established partnership to ensure a comprehensive focus on the first 1,000 days by strengthening nutrition and health system and improving access of services, including the following. Allocation of funds for the implementation of RA11148, Kalusugan at Nutrition ng Magnanay Act, capacitated local implementers and partners in the areas of nutrition, in emergency management, supportive supervision with mentoring on PMAM and family MIWAC. Monitoring and certification of health facility as mother and baby friendly health initiatives and enforcement of the executive order number 51 or the MELC code. Next is the provision of the treatment for 
moderate acute malnutrition and the severe acute malnutrition using the ready-to-use therapeutic food or the RUTF among infants and children six months to five years old. Then the provision of other nutrition commodities, including micronutrients, supplementation, vitamin A capsules, iodized oil, ferrosulfate, and other logistics, such as weighing scales, MUAC tapes, and breastfeeding advocacy materials. Also, we were able to deploy a nutritionist dietitian under the Nutritionist Deployment Program to assist in the implementation of the first 1,000 days programs under the local government units. Then we also intensified health and nutrition promotion and advocacy campaigns through the different media platforms. As we ensure that these services will continuously be provided, considering the current environment, such as the COVID-19 pandemic, enforcement of quarantine measures was affected, the harmonization and continued provision of health and nutrition services. The Department of Health have issued various guidelines on the delivery of essential nutrition services one of these is a DOH issuances or the Department Circular 2020-169 on the continuous provision of essential health services, including the COVID-19 pandemic, which includes uh, interpartum and newborn care, especially promotion of exclusive breastfeeding, management of malnutrition and micronutrient supplementation. Also to cover the restric restriction of face-to-face -face gathering, the activities and meetings were conducted online to ensure that there will be continuum of services to the different virtual platforms. The regional office is also in constant coordination with the provincial nutrition court team. The gap, there are gaps identified including the lack of validation of growth and monitoring activities due to restrictions yet recommended for data check, including nutrition indicators, OPT, PMAM reporting based on enhanced FHSIS. To sustain harmonization and the gains achieved, efforts, continued efforts are needed in the following aspects. Invest in nutrition through the inclusion of nutrition programs in the annual budget and operational plans to include human resources. And as by the next year, we will be starting to implement the bandanas rule. This will provide additional income or additional budget, especially to our local government units. Then support the local government unit transition in nutrition develop devolution and LGUs are expected to strengthen the integration of nutrition program to its local nutrition action plan aligned with the Philippine plan of action for nutrition. Then engage various stakeholders in the activity that promote nutrition. Also, develop and strengthen policies, especially local policies and programs in scaling up nutrition. And then lastly, this is to commit to actions towards eliminating malnutrition. So let us continue to work together to end all forms of malnutrition for a healthy Filipinas. Once again, Lagang salamat, ugmayong adlaw sa tanan. God bless us all. Thank you very much for that message, R.D. Brillantes. And now, let's hear from Mr. Elvin Ivan Uy, the Executive Director of Philippine Business for Social Progress, or PBS. Good afternoon, everyone. My warmest greetings and congratulations to Zilig Family Foundation, UNICEF, and COICA for bringing together SAMAR, 
Northern Samar and Sambuanga del Norte in this colloquium and providing the platform to celebrate the gains of the UNICEF and COICA assisted Provincial Nutrition Governance Program and share stories of best practices and even challenges in the course of program implementation. To our provinces and LGUs, we at Philippine Business for Social Progress are one with ZFF, UNICEF, and COICA in recognizing your exceptional rules in implementing an integrated and comprehensive approach to the delivery of maternal and child nutrition and health services in the critical first 1,000 days of life through nutrition and health system strengthening and improvement of access to services. ZFF has a proven model for achieving better health and nutrition outcomes by developing a responsive leadership that will put in place responsive local systems to deliver effective and efficient nutrition and health services. As you share the gains of your PNGP and its framework, I also welcome the opportunity to share our work on hunger and nutrition through the Hunger Project. The Hunger Project is a private sector alliance that seeks to address the problem of hunger, malnutrition, and food insecurity in the country by applying the business community's knowledge and resources to fight hunger and malnutrition, and by transforming communities to make them more resilient to future crises or shocks. PBSB acts as a secretariat of this alliance. Our evolving work in the Hunger Project includes awareness raising and educating the business community and other stakeholders on the state of hunger, malnutrition, and food insecurity, supporting the Philippine Plan of Action on Nutrition, or PIPAN, by adopting pilot sites and pushing for the 2030 Zero Hunger Agenda in these areas, scaling up model programs and projects, and pursuing relevant partnerships, proposing technology and market solutions to reduce food prices and wastage and help smallholder farmers, and documenting and disseminating best practices for possible replication or expansion. We are happy to share that ZFF is the Hunger Project's lead partner in advocating our agenda and programs on the first 1,000 days outside the national capital region. Our pilot sites include the three provinces, Samar, Northern Samar, and Sambuanga del Norte, along with Sarangani and Basilan. As has been highlighted in this colloquium, the accomplishments of the PNGP model are primarily attributed to the program's intersectoral collaboration as a strategy to harmonize efforts and interventions on nutrition within the local government levels. The private sector is also among the critical drivers of its conceptualization, implementation, and sustainability. Regardless of the anticipated political transitions and changes, the PNGP provides a systemic solution to the nutrition issues in your respective provinces. Given our geographical convergence and alignment of direction and priorities on nutrition, with the view that the PNGP continues to evolve and meet challenges along the way, the Hunger Project sees opportunities to support you in the continuing implementation of PNGP and sustaining the integrated first 1,000 days service delivery network. The Hunger Project's directions and objectives are aligned with the PNGP strategy and approach. We see this alignment as an opportunity to maximize local partnerships and explore a broader range of partnerships across boundaries and geographies to support or scale up initiatives. Part of what we do is to identify or create models and innovative solutions that may be supported by the private sector. PNGP is one model that can be advocated for further support, especially in the pursuit of integrating universal healthcare and other nutrition sensitive models into the program. I would like to echo a critical lesson shared by ZFF from across their interventions. Governance of nutrition systems start with responsive leaders. If we have responsive leaders, 
we are also ensured of responsive local systems. This enabling environment can foster convergence from relevant stakeholders, continue to build partnerships, and complement resources and expertise to deliver the desired outcome-based interventions for nutrition. PNGP is a remarkable feat for the three provinces. As you continue on, the private sector will stand with and support you in your journey towards improving the nutritional outcomes in your respective communities. Once again, thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Uy. And once again, thank you to our partners who shared their statements of support. Thank you, Dr. Ho, Ardi Brillantes, and Mr. Uy. But of course, the PNGP would not be possible if not for the unwavering support of our principal partner organization, which is UNICEF. So now let us all welcome Mr. Bizad Nubari, the Deputy Representative of UNICEF. To our government partners, Governor Roberto Uy of Zamboanga del Norte, Governor Reynold Michael Tan of Samar, Governor Edwin Marino Ong Chuan of Northern Samar, the mayors of the 19 COICA project sites, the Department of Health regional directors, and the National Nutrition Council representatives. To our development partners, Mr. Kim Ansub Koika, country director, and Ms. Lee Hyun Ju, Koika assistant country director, and Yang Haseo. And to our CSO partners, good afternoon. Our local government is essential to ensure that children and their families can access basic goods and services. And we've seen this not only in normal times, but especially during the emergencies. Many of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals have targets directly or indirectly related to the work of local governments. For example, Goal 11 highlights the importance of local solutions and a bottom-up approach to achieving the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Goal 16 emphasizes the importance of effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. The 2016 World Humanitarian Summit also emphasized the importance of respecting, supporting, and strengthening local leadership and its capacity to govern and respond during crises. As the government of the Philippines implements the universal health care law, in the context of the Mandanas Garcia ruling, the local government's capacity to provide service in nutrition, primary health care, education, social protection, and water sanitation and hygiene becomes even more crucial. UNICEF is grateful for the generous support of the Korea International Cooperation Agency and our partnership with the Zurich Family Foundation. Together, we provide technical and managerial support to governments and other partners to scale up their integrated nutrition and health programs for children, adolescents, and women. Our work is informed by sound data and evidence that goes into designing practical approaches, innovative strategies, and integrated frameworks. Today's event, the Provincial Nutrition Governance Colloquium, is one of the many ways we support the exchange of ideas among local government leaders and movers to provide, to promote cooperation. We look forward to hearing about your initiatives, innovations, lessons and best practices towards sectoral integration and easy access to harmonized nutrition specific and nutrition sensitive services. We hope that this is just the beginning of many more initiatives towards adopting a universal healthcare nutrition system. With the continued support an extraordinary commitment of COICA to the integrated first 1,000 days. We're grateful for this partnership that has already brought significant progress for children, women, and families. UNICEF stands ready to continue this work with, together with you, upholding the rights of every child to proper nutrition. Daghang salamat. Thank you very much, Mr. Nobari. Our warmest appreciation for you and the UNICEF team for part of our perseverance of the leaders in actively participating and 
and completing the provincial nutrition governance in order to further develop their leadership skills and improve their respective localities, health and nutrition systems. At this part of the provinces, together with their municipal teams, so may we request our LGUs to stand up once they are mentioned for them to be recognized. We start off with the province of Zamboanga del Norte team, who is led by Governor Roberto Uy, together with his core team. Thank you so much. Under Zamboanga del Norte province are the four Koika municipalities. Starting off from the municipality of Shayan, headed by Mayor Hostecor Hepolonka and his core team. Congratulations. Next is the municipality of Godod headed by Mayor Abel and Matildo and his core team. Let's give them a hand. Congratulations. Next is the municipality of Leon B. Postigo, headed by Mayor Aidaroz A. Hambali and his core team. Congratulations once again. And now for our next, we have the Municipality of Sindangan, headed by Mayor Rosendo S. Labad Labad and her core team. We would also like to recognize the support of the regional team in and from the Department of Health Center for Health and Development and the National Nutrition Council Zamboanga Peninsula headed by Regional Director Joshua Brillantes and Regional Nutrition Program Coordinator Ms. Nympha Ekong. Congratulations and thank you all for the support. All right, so now let us move to the Eastern Visayas region. We'll now acknowledge the province of Samar and the team is led by Governor Reynolds Michael Tan together with his court. Thank you, Samar team. And under the province of Samar, the, there are five Koika municipalities and two Koika cities. So now, may we call on the municipality of Tarangnan, headed by Mayor Arnel Tan and his core team. The municipality of Pagsanghan, headed by Mayor Edgar Tan and his core team. The Municipality of Santa Margarita, headed by Mayor Gemma P. Sosa and her core team. And we now call on Catbalogan City, 
headed by Mayor Dexter Uy and his core team. And Calbayog City, headed by Mayor Diego P. Rivera and his core team. All right. Congratulations to the municipalities, cities, and the province of Samar. Let's now proceed to the province of Northern Samar. And this is led by Governor Edwin, Mar Edwin Marino Ongchuan, together with his core team. Under the province of Northern Samar, there are eight Khoika municipalities. May we call on the municipality of Bubon, headed by Mayor Clara C. Gremio and her core team. We would also like to acknowledge as well the incoming mayor, Honorable Reni A. Celespara. The municipality of Lapinig, headed by Mayor Maria Luisa A. Manzon and her core team. The Municipality of Gamay, headed by Mayor Clarita P. Gomba and her core team. We would also like to acknowledge as well the incoming Mayor, Honorable Raquel Kapokian. The Municipality of Mapanas, headed by Mayor Francis John L. Tejano and his core team. The Municipality of Mondragon, headed by Mayor Mario M. Madera and his core team. Municipality of San Jose, headed by Mayor Clarence E. Dato and his core team. The Municipality of Lope de Vega, headed by Mayor Ana Palio and her core team. And the Municipality of Catarman, headed by Mayor Francisco C. Rosales Jr. and his core team. Congratulations to our province of Northern Samar and the municipalities as well. We would also like to recognize the support of the regional teams from the Department of Health, Center for Health Development, and the National Nutrition Council, Eastern Visayas. Headed by Dr. Exuperia Sabalberino, the Regional Director of the DOHCHD Eastern Visayas, with her core team members, Dr. Milagros, Salvacion Corsiga Bolito, and Felicita Borata, as well as our NNC Region 8, headed by Dr. Catalino Dottolio Jr., with core teams, Archie Nino Lobordo, Ulasini J. Pangan, and Hana Abigail Bautista. Thank you and congratulations. We would also like to take this opportunity to extend our gratitude and appreciation to our academic partners who co-implemented the Municipal and the City Nutrition Governance Program would like to appreciate Ateneo de Zamboanga University for Zamboanga del Norte Municipality. And also we have Davao Medical School Foundation Incorporated for Samar and Northern Samar Municipalities and Cities. Once again, congratulations to our nutrition champions for this milestone in strengthening our F1KD and nutrition system. Kudos to everyone. At this point, let us now hear from Executive Director of the Zulig Family Foundation, Mr. Austere A. Panadero, for his concluding remarks.
Sundin ko si Gob will deliver the message in person. <laughs> Mahirap kayang tumingin sa sarili mo sa TV. <laughs> uh, so first of all, I would like to thank and congratulate all our three LG provincial partners and the municipalities that has just been uh, recognized uh, for your very, I should say, very active uh, and very inspiring engagement in this project. This has been, I think, a learning experience to everyone, including this afternoon. It's rather long, but I think a lot of insights have been generated from the, you know, short uh, sharing of everyone. Mahirap uh, maalala lahat, but I'm sure there are keywords that are kept somewhere in your database. So, namadaling hugutin. We will document all of this and send you also all the copies. So, in, indeed, no, as Dr. Beverly Holm mentioned, uh, you have already moved far. You have done a lot. Just for your, not only for your towns, for your municipalities, but for the rest of our colleagues, other LGU colleagues all over the country who are also facing this particular challenge. Uh, Ika nga, however, kung, kung marami nang nagawa, as you all also said, marami pang dapat gawin. So I just certain would hope that, uh, the, that this process of learning together continues. And uh, we keep on, and we'll never stop in finding better ways of doing things, be it at the barangay level, municipal level, and, and at the provincial level. Uh, uh, level. So, maraming salamat, the province of Northern Samar, province of Sambuanga del Norte, and the province of Samar. And in particular, I would like to thank Governor Michael Tan for joining us in person today and sharing uh, his own thoughts on, on his uh, experiences. I don't know kung napansin ninyo, Si Gob, magiging congressman, sabi niya kanina, isa sa mga priority legislative proposal is about the BNS. So, I hope, I, I would suggest we all support congressman, soon to be congressman, uh, um, Mike Tan, for this very important effort. Alam, nakita natin kung gaano kahalaga yung BNS. So siguro panahon naman na tingnan natin paano ba natin suportahan at uh, ika nga uh, ma-encourage at pabigyan talaga ng suporta na mahusay ang ating mga barangay nutrition scholar. So uh, as pointed out by Doc Joyce earlier, a lot has been learned. Kaya nagpapasalamat tayo sa ating mga LGUs no, for showing... Uh, uh, you know, your own uh, achievements. By the way, maraming salamat doon sa mga nasa video. Uh, I think uh, that video will go all over the Philippines <laughs> and will go all over the world uh, courtesy of our partner uh, uh, UNICEF. So, uh, napakahalaga ng inyong uh, pag pagbabahagi ng inyong mga karanasan and we certainly uh, uh, look forward to more engagements uh, along that area on nutrition. So thank you for showing how a coordinated local action can be can significantly change the or improve the overall response to malnutrition. And napakarami nating nakita, no? Uh, yung realization na hindi lang pala ito feeding. I think napaka-powerful nung mensahe na yun. Uh, kailangan pagsama-sama and how local actions can be implemented in synergy with and more importantly the continuing support of our technical resource institutions the DOHs and NNC and I'd like to take this opportunity as well to thank DOHs and NNC for really providing the guidance encouragement and helping build that confidence among our local governments to continue exploring and trailblazing uh, towards a better solution to this problem. Palakpakan po natin ang DOH at ang National Nutrition Council uh, Region 8. And I think the other one that I took note is that there are really possible ways to ensure our, you know, uh, 
how nutrition or if, if first 1,000 day interventions are sustainably carried out under a UHC or a fully devolved environment. Doc Ofel Alcantara, who is a, used to be a senior official in DOH, now mayor of Tulosa Leyte, uh, kaya siya yung unang tumingin dyan kung paano ba magkaroon ito ng <clears throat> ikang synergy or integration yung UHC and uh, uh, ang, uh, nutrition. At your experiences greatly contributed to that framing of the problem. May not have answered all the issues, but certainly pointed out already areas where further uh, uh, analysis and you know, the very clear uh, actions need to be done in order to sustain the work there. So, yung uh, moving forward, uh, yung ating uh, partnership uh, will not, of course, end uh, here uh, in, in, or in terms of addressing the issue of the nutrition or the first 1,000 days, but this journey will just have to continue. And uh, we'd like to take this opportunity to again assure our partners, UNICEF and COICA, that the investments on this particular uh, effort is a something that will have long-term uh, impact by way of really exploring other ways to improve uh, delivery of the F1KD services. May not be immediate, but definitely with the experience and commitment of everyone who has been actively engaged, uh, further thinking on this will definitely continue. But as you have seen, as we all have seen, the, the, the very LGU-specific innovations that have been put in place in this project may have some challenges in some places, but in most places that uh, this project has uh, been into, ay patuloy na yan. Uh, I think there is a momentum already that has been created. I certainly would, would uh, encourage everyone uh, to, to pursue what has been started. Okay, let me just... Uh, call attention to a few items I noted during the presentation and I just want to uh, probably uh, share that these are, I think, the, the cross-cutting challenges that we continue to grapple with. So I just want to uh, highlight these things to you. Unang-una uh, uh, dyan yung the matter of, I think, it keeps on cropping up. Improving the information system. Totoo talaga ito, no? Parang uh, across the three provinces, you know, better decisions could have been made if reporting, if information is accurate. Pero hindi lang accurate, real time. Hindi yung one year ago. I think ito yung karamihang reklamo ng ating mga mayor. Paano pa natin mahabol si nutritionally at risk nanganak na bago natin malamang may problema pala siya. So I think that that's, that's a continuing issue that we'll all have to deal with moving forward. And let's, we can together find ways of how to best approach that particular problem. Number two, and this is a clear also to all of us, but uh, I think the solution is going to be uh, still in, in, in uh, yeah, kung baga ba hahanapin natin, ano? It's just, just a simple case of I think all of you increase your budgets and thank you for that and, 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 and that's very important. But our concern moving forward is how do you really sustain the local investments for nutrition such that you will achieve the outcome? Wag tayong, I hope it's clear, sabi nga ng ating kanina, may isang nagbanggit, kailangan na tutok, kailangan may resulta. Hindi lang basta nag-fund ka ng PPA kung hindi ang pinunduhan mo yung improvement. To know whether there has been an improvement. So I think that's still a, a challenge to all of us to find what is that sustainable level of investment such that in three years, 
during your term, because your term is three years, you should be able to really see improved situations. So I hope that's a... The next three years is an interesting year for all of us, especially involved dito at the LGU level. Because you have, you, you have the universal health care and you have the full devolution come into play. How those things will evolve is something that is going to be very interesting. Probably wala pa tayong maliwanag na, na formula dyan, but sana yan ay ating sabay-sabay uh, ralin, bantayan, at huwag kalimutan ang nutrisyon sa, pag, sa, pag, sa usapin ng pag-budget at paglagak, paglagak ng, ng, ng investments. And last but not least on the, social, on the local investments, the one of our speakers, uh, Elvin Uy of PBSP, mentioned about private sector. We, we, we see private sector as a, a something that can augment what is being done on the ground. So I think this process that you have been through is a good, you know, gives them good handles on what is already happening on the ground and how best to engage uh, local governments uh, uh, moving forward. And the, the third item is the, the issue of capacity building. Talaga hong palagi nating babalikan itong usapin ng capacity building. Napakadaming pangangailangan. And I think all of us, as uh, pointed out by the local chief executives, invested a few small things in here and there. We all realize that this is a system that we all need to likewise uh, really pay attention to. So, pati na rin siguro ang ating mga technical resource institutions, the OH and NC, uh, kikita na rin nila yung mga pangangailangan for capacity building. Hindi uh, lang para sa LGU, para rin sa, sa ating mga technical resource institution because things are also evolving uh, fast. Ang napaka-challenging na portion dito yung as we move to the province-wide delivery. As we all know, nutrition is actually really devolved into municipio under the local government code. But uh, here, because of UHC, it becomes a province-wide thing. So ito yung, uh, and last but not the least, is the sustained leadership of the local chief executive. I think we all see this, we experience it, that without the chief executive pushing it, nothing really much is going to happen. So the challenge is, how do you sustain that kind of leadership? So, siguro mag, uh, makikipagkita ulit kami sa mga ating mga punong bayan at mga gobernador upang patuloy na pag-uusapan kung paano ba natin, uh, uh, paano natin mabigyan ng uh, kaukulang pansin itong mga issues na ito that will really push us uh, further. On our part in the Zwilig Family Foundation, uh, itong mga knowledge products na nabuo natin, itong inyong mga kwento, will certainly find their way into the other LGUs. Uh, I think there is, a, if I got it right, there was a news report yesterday. Uh, ang ating bansa ay magkakaroon ng uh, isang malaking programa sa nutrisyon. Uh, uh, na, nasa, nasa inquirer news ito, kahapon ba o kanina kagabi? And there is a big project uh, on nutrition that is going to be implemented starting late this year, covering 200 or so towns. I think your provinces are included there. Uh, that would be an interesting opportunity for everyone. Good for them. What you have done will now be shared with them. We'll probably really make sure that whatever learnings happened here will be shared with this other towns are moving forward. We likewise, CFF would likewise promote these uh, learnings and uh, experiences with the private sector and definitely last but not the least, continue to advocate for more UHC to make uh, nutrition uh, visible in the debates or discussion on UHC and in the full devolution. 
in all of this, your inputs would be sought and uh, we'll continue the dialogues uh, with you. So in closing today, uh, I would say that probably we know better than 10 years ago. <laughs> so, so, so we need to continue, you know, try and make the effort of applying these new learnings. Ito lang naman ang ating pakiusap at ganun lang naman palagi. Ano? If we know something new, apply it. Don't just keep it somewhere. And continue to search for better ways of responding to the nutrition challenge. Malayo pa tayo doon sa, we're still yata up in the ranking and that's not really a nice place to be, no? So let us always remember, and uh, if I may paraphrase one, one, one uh, uh, paragraph on this, parang, let us all remember that the future belongs to those who can make sustained and inclusive growth happen. Sustained, patuloy, hindi lang paminsan-minsan, inclusive para sa lahat, hindi lang para sa iba o para sa isang grupo. Sustained and inclusive. So yung leadership challenge moving forward is not only about setting clear directions or harnessing a group towards a vision, but it also now requires that leadership must continuously find ways to accelerate realization of sustainable development uh, growth. So, the key word is accelerate. Hindi ho pwedeng kung darating lang. Kailangang maliwanag kung kailan natin gusto makita. Lalo na sa panahon ngayon na napakaraming problema, let's probably try to find the shortest path to a better outcome. And that is the challenge to, to everyone. So, ulitin ko lang, patuloy para sa lahat at pabilisin. Yun ang hamon sa ating mga bagong, sa ating mga manamumuno, sa ating mga lokal na pahamalaan. So as we celebrate, I think, Nutrition Month uh, in July. So let us be reminded with this, new normal na nutrisyon sa masamang gawan ng solusyon. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Congratulations. At uh, maraming salamat sa inyong presensya in your best attire. <laughs> because this requires being in our best attire is really reserved for best occasions such as this when we all learn together and commit to a higher purpose. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sir Ostir. Uh, uh, those words were very fitting to keep reminding us of what are the main points that we learned for this afternoon. And also, I'd also like to acknowledge and to thank all of those of you who participated and uh, provided your insights, of course, through the QR codes and the forms that we provided. Thank you very much for sharing your insights. We have received a lot of your thoughts, especially on the importance of leadership when it comes to pushing for changes, when it comes to nutrition, allotment of budget at the local level and even at the national and at the regional levels as well. And we've also received some comments and feedback from you on how we can further improve sessions such as this one so we thank you very much for your time we are also including your insights in our documentation so please watch out for that and we will be sharing that with you as well indeed today marks not the end but the beginning of a brighter tomorrow with local governments and leaders who are more equipped in continuously addressing malnutrition. This is geared towards effectively implementing universal health care because at the end of the day what we want, of course, is to achieve better health and nutrition outcomes for all Filipinos. And just like we said, we want to continually improve uh, kinds of activities such as this one. So we would like to invite all of you also to participate in a post-activity evaluation because we value your opinion. So for those of us who are in the Zoom room, you are now seeing an online poll being shown. So please take the time to accomplish that. And we will also be sharing uh, a link for those who are not online so that you can also access the form and accomplish the evaluation.
please provide us with your honest evaluation of what has happened this uh, this afternoon so that we can continuously improve ourselves as well. I will uh, give you a few minutes uh, to answer the poll. As, as people are answering the poll, may I or also invite those who are in the Zoom room to start opening your cameras already because we will be taking an online group photo. So this is quite an unusual group photo. We will be having people online and on-site uh, in one photo together. So yung mga on-site po, pwede rin po kayo mag-retouch-retouch ng konti. <laughs> At mag-smile din po kayo para makita din po tayo in our online group photo. Yeah, so you may, uh, uh, may I ask the participants inside the Zoom room to already start turning on their cameras? All right. And happy to be seeing your faces. All right. Okay, so we are now seeing a lot of congratulatory messages in our chat box from our online participants. Uh, so coming from those in Zoom. So sending out congratulations, of course, to our LGU leaders who are here this afternoon. All right. May I get a cue from our team if we're doing the online photo already and if we are done? Okay po. One, two, three. Smile po. Thank you po. All right. So, thank you very much for that. And with that, at this point, we are now closing our online activity. But the ceremonies at each site in Tacloban City and in Depolog City will proceed for the individual awarding of certificates to the PNGP and MNGP participants. So, hindi pa po tapos para sa ating mga kasama na nandoon sa Tacloban at sa Dipolo. It has truly been an afternoon filled with much learning, insights, and discoveries for everybody. So, I would like to thank all of you for sharing the time with us. And we look forward to more meaningful collaborations as we continue to work together for better nutrition for all Filipino children. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat at maraming salamat. That's the better. Thanks, Herman. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> bye bye. Assalamu alaikum, maayong hapon sa ating tanan. Hindi pa pa tayo tapos. <laughs> Kaya chin, ano yan, chin up and breast out muna tayo dyan. So we are on the final part of our colloquium. At ito din po ang pinaka-exciting na part. Sabi ng mga kabataan ngayon. So this is the recognition and awarding of blocks and certificates to the bridging leaders who have completed the Provincial Nutrition Governance Program. 
We shall start with a message from Dr. Mariela Castillo. She is the Health and Nutrition Specialist of UNICEF Philippines. Thank you, Ma'am Jess. Good afternoon and congratulations! Sambuanga del Norte uh, Province, Iyayan, Godod, Leon Postigo, Sindangan, and core team. You made it this far. Congratulations. I am very impressed. Kasi integrated service delivery model na na COVID pa. Diba? And the stories that you shared this afternoon are truly, truly a wealth of information that is worth sharing. And it's always important to reflect on the stories that were shared. Dahil, we started out to address stunting through the first 1,000 days interventions. And along the way, the readiness to deliver the integrated um, services turns out to be the way to make the LGU ready to implement universal health care. Um, and it is only right because when you look at the list of first 1,000 day services, it is essentially mirroring the core uh, set of services for primary health care. And all of you who presented, you ended up with the realization that there's still work to be done and then there's a list of the, you know, the, the, the ones that are red, yellow, and what else needs to be done. And that is a very good sign, sabi nga ni Sir Austere, no? Because the urgency and relevance of nutrition remains, it, you all realize it needs to continue to be a top priority for the LGUs to address if we want a healthy and progressive Philippines for the next generation. Hanggang doon na lang po, buong hapon na po 